Hey, everybody. It's election day week. Whatever. Uh, early voting ends today, Saturday, uh, the 27th. Um, so if you want to early vote and you haven't early voted yet and you're listening to this as soon as it releases, you better get your shit together because I think they close at 2 today. Uh, then election day is on Thursday, which I kept wanting to say Tuesday all week, but they're on Thursday. So anyway, uh, August 1st, uh, Knox County General, state federal primaries. Get, get, get you out there because guess what? It's already looking like a shitty turnout. Surprise! Almost an agreement. Almost an agreement at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. Go to the website, almost While you're there, check out hollerboo.com. Hollerboo24 is upon us. Soapbox Derby, Street Fair, Rock and Roll concert on the street, getting outside, getting to have a good time. It's the bye week for UT football, so we're not interfering with that. Uh, speaking of UT, we're going to talk about some pitches. Anyway, uh, we'll get there here in a second. Almost an agreement uh, on your favorite podcast provider. Like, friend, follow, share. Tell everybody about us. Text it to your peeps. And uh, get out and vote, for the love of God. Uh, CompassNox.com has got free coverage on all their election stuff. It's outside the paywall. It is free right now. Go to CompassNox.com. Check out what they got going on if you want to learn a lot more than you're going to learn from me. Uh, thanks. Here we go. Uh, hey, buddy. Hey, hey. Oh, what's new with you? Oh, not much. Word. Broke a mirror the other day. Broke a mirror? Yeah. I'm looking at seven years of bad luck. My oh, lawyer shit. thinks he can get me off in three to five. Oh! Man, you weren't practicing that one. You got that on all, like, cue cards. I see, you, don't, you guys don't see the cue cards. I see the cue card right here in front of me. Cue uh, card. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, UT and Michigan State are in a joint research project with on behalf of and financed by FIFA for the uh, production of a the, a good field for the upcoming 26 World Cup. Yeah, I think I sent you that article like four or five months ago. Yeah, well, they apparently they did a presser earlier this week, and so uh, it kind of popped back up. Yeah. But they did a presser and didn't say anything about anything. <laughs> like, not how it works, not what they're doing. Um Apparently, I didn't hear I didn't hear about this because I didn't pay a ton of attention. But apparently, it was a big issue at Copa. And so, okay, to back it up a second, FIFA, by rule, any FIFA sanctioned tournament must be on real grass. They do not permit playing on any sort of fake grass. Con Concabol or whatever the South American. What was it? it? Was the Women's World Cup? They tested out the artificial grass a while back. Well, apparently they didn't like it because they're like. They were all getting like nasty rashes on their legs from doing slide tackles. Yeah, well, apparently that uh, if that was their test, then they that they the, the fake grass failed the test, and so they're. Oh. Um, and so South American Football Confederation or whatever, whom is the uh, functional host of uh, the uh, Copa we just had, also has that real grass rule, and a number of the stadiums they used in Copa are going to be stadiums for the World Cup. So Atlanta, Miami. Uh, Toronto, which they didn't use for Copa, but anyway, number of the stadiums. And so that they, they, they had whatever method they tried to figure out how to put real grass over these turf, these fake turf stadiums. Yeah, didn't, I was about to say, I didn't, didn't go very well. Grass. It does not. They put, they, apparently what they did is they basically brought in giant rolls of sod, threw them on top of the AstroTurf that was already there. And, uh, there's reports of people watching the game and you could see like gaps. Yeah. I was about to say, you would think that wouldn't like where they slide, self. right. It's sliding around on top of each other. And they're not holding place. And one 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 team or manager at least is blaming a significant injury to one of their top players during Copa on the field. Right. Which you know you might do that anyway. But is it yeah. Messi? I think he got injured in like the the final. The final, yeah, yeah. But I was. I think he got stepped on. Like I was yeah. one of those where he got stepped on, and, and the ankle did that thing where uh, the the leg was looking like the foot should be flat on the ground, but the foot was on the, its inside edge. Yeah. Um, it was pretty nasty because they, they kept showing close-ups of him on the bench when he had no soccer or anything, anything on, and it was swollen as fuck. It's like a like a like a big old grapefruit on the end of his leg. I don't know where MLS is right now in their their thing. Yeah, uh, they should be playing, I think, because they're opposite. They have they're not on cycle with the with the major European leagues. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, while we're talking soccer right now, it's Olympics time. The Olympics are on as we speak. Um, yeah, that's one of the first sports they start with. I think it's like rugby and. Soccer, there's already been games. Yeah, a couple of uh, U.S. already lost their first group game. Um, See, uh, or did you hear about the Canadian soccer team? The uh, or they got they got beat by Argentina or beat Argentina. Was it an upset or no? They beat. They had a game. It was the women's team that just had a game against New Zealand. But I guess this was like 
the last straw, but apparently they've been busted doing it before. But there was a drone that they were using to take uh, footage of the opposing teams, like practice. Oh damn! But apparently, this isn't like the first time they've got caught. <laughs> that's some. Uh, that's some. Uh, yeah, the coach has already had. That's some coach Belichick. The check coach check. stepped down for this game, which Australia still won, two to one. Australia but, or Canada? You said Canada and New Zealand. I'm sorry, Canadian. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's a Canadian team. They sorry they were playing. New I mean, Zealand. they're all under Her Majesty's umbrella. I get it. I guess kind of. Or His Majesty. Now I'm sorry. I still get. I still that's say true. that a lot. Yeah. Um, but I uh, watched a little bit of the. Uh, opening ceremonies live this afternoon, and then I started watching it again on the the primetime recap version uh, a little bit before we got started. And Snoop Dogg in the Hazy, ran, he had a section that he was a torchbearer for a little bit. Yeah, I saw that's weird. He's a uh, well, I mean, he's a he's he. I, I guess at the last Olympics, him and Kevin Hart had a show really that they did that was part of the NBC broadcast. It was like a late night show. Uh-huh. It was pretty funny. Uh, apparently, <laughs> uh, Snoop did a whole thing where he was messing with. Uh, there's a whole bit where Snoop came in one day and he was like, man, I'm tired. And uh, Kevin Hart's like, was you, you, you have a party last night? No. He's like, no, nah, man, I was studying all my stuff. He's like, what stuff? There's no stuff. They didn't give me any stuff. And so like Snoop just kind of kept it up yeah. and kept going <laughs> on it for a while. And Kevin Hart's freaking out because <laughs> he's like, I don't know what we're doing. What are we talking about? What stuff are they giving you to study? There's a lot of stuff we got to memorize for this. He's like, I didn't think you did that kind of stuff. What are we talking about? But uh, yeah, Snoop's there. Peyton's there. Um, it's like Celine Dion and Lady Gaga yeah. did some music for. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of cool. The whole boat thing is kind of neat. I watched a little bit of that. Like, yeah, I, meant to, I saw some started, like the CGI renderings of it, but I haven't seen like any of the action. They started pouring buckets. Like it was raining pretty heavy for a good section of it. Was it? And like, it was like when Team USA was coming across the main part where they're like, as that's the main part that everybody was crossing, it was raining pretty good. They're all in there like, you know, trash bag ponchos and hooting and hollering and waving. Sorry, Ralph Lauren. No, I wasn't going to see your <laughs> stylish get-ups yet. Yeah. And then, uh, I know, there's this weird thing. There's this, there's this cool little something that they contraption that they made that was, it wasn't, it was, it was a, it was being towed behind a boat. The metal horse or something. Yeah. And it was like this horse. And like, I don't know if like it was powered on its own and that's what made the horse move or like it had some sort of thing where the moving water made it look like the horse was running on top of the water. Apparently, like, I, I don't know. I don't pay that much attention. I don't care about this part of tradition of it. But, like, apparently one of the tradition things in the Olympics is all of the participant flags go, and then the Olympic flag is the is the caboose of the train. Yeah, so, yeah the and Olympic so, flag was on the horse. Right, something. so they go fly all the flags, and they're in the, in the official place, and then the Olympic flag is the last one to be set, and it's the last one to go through the parade. And it was this person riding this horse contraption. And then when they got off the boat, you didn't see him get on or off the this horse boat thingy. But then it was a real white horse and a real person on the horse that was wearing the flag as a cape that brought it out to the stage area where they took it off their back and and did they have to do the actual lighting? I don't know. I didn't see that part. <laughs> I mean, it's somebody famous. Yeah, it's just Pat. Like, I don't know. I'm a, like, there was a little bit of the of the late night cover or of the primetime coverage I just started watching before you got here. That was like, uh, it was Savannah Guthrie and Hoda. I think we're talking, and they're like, this, there, "There's the who's who's the stars here. Elon Musk is here. Tom Cruise is here." And they're just like pointing, and there was just like all these like very uh, candid, like paparazzi style. Pic- like you could tell it was the cameraman that was for them that just turned around, and this crowd that was behind him had all these like top level celebrities just hanging out. One of the bridges apparently that the that goes over the Seine was like cordoned off as like a a watch point basically. And so people pay, I, I would assume people had, there was some sort of special reason you got to be there. It wasn't just anybody just right. happened to be on the bridge, gets to hang out and watch it. But this particular part had all the famous people. Well, at least it wasn't delaying us. So they had like, like arson attacks on yes. some of the high, high, yeah. high speed trail lines. Yeah. I heard that as well, but I want to say there was something yesterday as well. What yesterday as well. I thought there was like some, 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 some with like the, the subway. Later. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not, what's funny to me is that like in one of those parts where Snoop was talking to him, he's like, you know, it's like peace, love and unity and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, I mean, I know you've like, I know you've aged out of the whole gangster shit that we grew up with you on, but it's still kind of weird that you're on an international broadcast for the largest sporting event on the planet talking about peace, love and unity. When we, we all, we all grew up with you straight out of Compton and killing Killing yeah. motherfuckers and whatnot. <laughs> it still kind of gets to me. But, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just... But he actually had to carry the torch, right? Yeah, he carried the torch for a little while. Yeah. 
he was the last one on dry land. I think is what it was. He ha- he passed he, he he passed the torch or he lit the torch of the person that was on the boat that was leading the parade out. At least that's what so I. I'm assuming that you would kind of keep that to more of like a national thing. I don't know how it goes. Uh, I touched uh, when uh, in the '80s when when whichever one we, uh, whichever Winter Olympics the U.S. hosted back in the '80s. Like Lake Placid, maybe. Maybe um, I got to touch the torch. I don't remember it at all, but I don't know. I think Placid was like early '80s, maybe. It was. It had to be. We were, we were living in Colorado, so it had to be like pre eighty four, yeah. between eighty one and eighty four, or something. Maybe it was. It might have been. It could have been like Calgary too. It could have been one of the Canadian ones because they might have run it through the states to get up there. But anyway, it ran through Colorado, and the guy running down the street just like well, there was Salt just, Lake City. Now nah, you would have been older for Salt Lake City. Yeah. The guy was running down the highway or whatever with the torch and had a whole barrage of people and yeah. everybody just standing watching him run by cheering and stuff. Wow. Um, and like he stopped and I didn't get to hold it, but I was like, yeah, yeah. And there's a picture of me somewhere that my mom has of me touching the whatever Olympics that was torch. So that's, that was. that's the closest thing I got. I'm sure if we dug through hard enough, we could find somebody we know that made it to the Olympics in some way, shape or form. I, don't remember, I thought there was like some kind of weird rule about if it goes out like in transit. Because they start it like in Greece, it's right. like the you know the torch literally going from one place to another. Right, it's the metaphor is the flame right. is Tra- continuously yeah, transferring the, the right. Flame. The, the, the torch is unimportant; it's the flame that matters. Right. I don't know what the rule is on that. Uh, there was a portion of this one where they were underwater, like it had some underwater apparatus that did this thing. What? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's not France isn't that far from <laughs> Greece. Yeah, you know they ran it. Well, I mean, it's go like around the world. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I mean, it's it's whatever. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I like it. I'm, uh, you know, we got some uh, different stuff going on. I, I always, I like the I, I like the field games more than I like track. Yeah, I've always like I've always, I like the shot put. I like the high jump. I like the uh, pole vault, and like uh, discus, and some of the different throwing field sports. I'm not a super fan of like the whole Usain Bolt thing and the, all that. The super, the fastest man alive, the th- hundred meter dash is always kind of has its fun part, but it's like. It, the way that TV covers it now is just it's so much build up to literally a nine and a half second race. Right. And it's like, okay, you know, like Kentucky Derby is like, uh, it bothers me in that sense because there's so much build up to a 90 second race or, uh, yeah, it's like a minute and a half, something like that. Yeah. Normal Derby runs. You know, and like, it's like, that, that man, it's so much build up for such a little thing. <laughs> and it's just like, okay. And so, but that, that, that inversely, I hate watching marathons too. So I don't, apparently I just don't like watching people run. It just makes me tired. <laughs> um, I think I heard somebody say that they're doing break dancing like in, in oh. Tahiti. Yeah. So I guess they're totally a, like opposite end of yeah, the world. It's a, it's a French territory or whatever. Right. 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 Yeah. Indeed. I did hear about that. Cause there's like, cause like beach volleyball's in off the West coast there somewhere. Uh, I, yeah. I think. There's a couple of different events that are well out of Paris proper. Yeah, you think they do it down like the Mediterranean, Me too. Like, like Tuscany area. That would be that'd be for cheap. Yeah, I don't know. I just remember seeing it. It was on an actual beach. It wasn't on like a beach of the Seine. It was like right. an ocean beach. How do you think they would just made an artificial beach somewhere? I don't know. You know, right. I, I mean, but in 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 inversely though, if when they can and it's reasonable to spread it out, it's probably not a bad deal either. Right. You know. Like we were, to, me and the oldest were talking about it. Uh, he said, "I heard online they were sleeping, like the athletes are sleeping on cardboard beds." I'm like, "Yeah, it's probably some, maybe here and there, but uh, I mean, yeah." But I mean, but I was like, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they're 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 it's like recycled cardboard. But, but I've heard a lot of people say that they're super firm. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, there are some teams that have already ordered like mattress covers, or like yeah, like mattress. Right, mattress toppers. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's like, you know, you got to think, I don't know how many thousands of athletes are there. Right. And then the staff that comes along with it, whether it's coaching staff, if it's a team sport, even, even the coaches of individual sports are there. Um, you have plenty of trainers and doctors and medical and whatever that are directly related to the team. And then you have the Olympic committees <clears throat> testing and steroid use and all that kind of stuff. You have that whole set of people that does all that kind of stuff. And then you have, I don't know. I think they said it on the NBC broadcast that there are at least 14 countries that have broadcast teams there. 
You know, and so like I don't know what do you, how many people you think NBC has there. Like just on camera, a couple hundred. Just on camera watching, there was like fifteen, like host face personalities, and so each of them probably has they probably have at least a hair and makeup person for every two or three of those, and then producers and whatever. Now I do assume that the television, like the actual production part, is a single crew. That it's <clears throat> like all the cameras that like for the for the thing tonight where they had all the cameras set up around town watching the boats go by. That's probably just one. <clears throat> a singular camera crew that s- sends feeds out to all these different broadcasts. Possibly. Yeah. And so it's not like NBC has, it's not like there's a, a, a U.S., French, German, Spanish, like it's not like there's like 15 cameras all piled on top of each other to get the s- similar angles next to each other. It's probably just one camera set there, but then every participating broadcaster gets the direct feeds and then in their trailer they pick which one they're using and how they're using it and different stuff like that Maybe. and whether it's like hey we're gonna throw it to the person over here talking about this or this other thing and like that camera crew is theirs but the general stuff is probably universal you just think like espn doesn't necessarily come out with their own camera crew every football game there's a lot of times where they have that and espn buys the footage from the production company that's on site in a lot of sports yeah so but still, point B, and you have that camera crew in and of itself, if I'm right, and then you have all of the NBC staff that's there. You have all of French's version and France's version and Germany's version and all the other countries that are there with production teams and doing all that kind of stuff there. Um, all the different support staff that helps the different stadiums and whatever run. And like it's, I could see, I'd be curious. I'm sure somebody has it out there. Somebody's done the, run the math on it. Like how many people are directly involved in making the event go? It's probably a pretty good – I'd say it's – I don't know how many athletes it well, is. I mean, you would think some of the production stuff, they can just you know, satellite that directly back to the headquarters. They don't have to have anybody on, on ground. Right, that's what I'm saying. Well, uh, no, I think you need to have somebody there. If it's jumping from you know uh, Savannah and Hoda talking over here to the feet of the river – to Snoop talking over there, that's going to be somebody probably on site. I wouldn't think they're sending that back to New York and then sending it back. Yeah, but I don't think they're airing anything live, so they've got plenty of time to... Yeah, well, they did it live, and then they're redoing it. They redo it. The opening, yeah. Right. And I'm talking these, about going forward for as far as the rest of the coverage. I think they do most... Like, they're supposed to be doing... NBC, through their Peacock streaming service, is supposed to be doing anything that's got signal. They're going to have a live version of it on... Not really. Peacock, but I think that's the same deal. Is I think there's a crew on site that's not necessarily an NBC crew, and that feed's getting tossed to NBC, and then they're sending it to whatever process they put it on Peacock. Maybe. Now, there, now you might be right. Like the, the English, the American English commentators on um, handball might be in a studio in New York, and that feed's coming to them, and they're watching it on TV and doing the commentating, and then NBC's kicking it out after they commentate it. It might be a straight line live, but they might not be in the flesh watching the game. I guess I'm thinking more, I guess, like the primetime coverage of it. It's yeah, that's already like been super edited. Like, yeah. Sp- yeah, spliced together. Yeah, that's I'm super like, edited right, and cleaned up. And, yeah. This sport, then this sport, then this sport. Which I hate that shit. I'd rather, I wanted to watch, like, I went and I was looking at NBC's, the Olympics website, um, looking at what NBC's coverage and what's on what channel and stuff like that, because I'm trying to figure out what it, if there's anything I want to, like, actually watch. Or if I just kind of want to turn it on and leave it on in the background and look over every once in a while. I'm not sure yet. I haven't found anything in particular that I'm super... I do want to watch skateboarding a little bit. I was that's, I think that's cool. Um, I do want to see how breakdancing works. I want to see how it functionally works as a competitive sport. Yeah. More than I really care that much about breakdancing individually. You know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes the equestrian stuff is super fun. Have you ever watched any like the, the steerage? Not steerage. uh what do they call that? Steepleford? No, steeplechase is a type of race. No, it's the one where it's like, it's very like, it's a... Uh, dressage? Yeah, dressage, yeah. Have you ever watched that? It's very fascinating. I think I've seen it. I don't really understand it. Like, it's very fascinating. It's like, it's synchronized swimming. You know, like, it's like, yeah. if you know what you're looking at, you can see that the horse did this thing or the rider 
did a bounce at the wrong time and like they're talking about it you're like what the fuck are you it's a person riding a horse <laughs> i see the person riding the horse but they're like this horse is magic magnificent world champion this that and the other and you'll notice that this horse has a very sp- unique gait and stuff like that and it's like no that horse looks exactly like the horse before i don't understand what you're talking about but if you know it it's a it's apparently amazing because these are the best in the world at riding horses. like equestrian sport where it's you're doing the jumping but i think there's also kind of like the little moats that you've got to jump over as well I thought maybe that was like a... I think that's steeplechase. Steeplechase, okay. I know steeplechase is the race. I know steeplechase is the running race as well that you have, that every track has that one like heavy-duty hurdle that has the pit on the other side. That's the steeplechase foot race. It's like a distance race, but like every lap you have to jump over that thing and oh, okay. you land in like a foot of water and run out of it and every once in a while people will duff it. Or they do it on purpose to cool off. I don't know. But... I don't think it's on purpose. All right, uh, thank you for tuning in to Almost in Agreement's uh, first day of Olympics Olympic coverage. coverage. Um, nothing has happened yet. Uh, actually, no, U.S. soccer lost already. Surprise. Men's or women's? Men's. We play. I, I thought we won the game That was like already. Tuesday or Wednesday. Oh, I thought we beat like Tanzania or somebody. Maybe our second game's happened. I, th- I thought I read that we won our first game, but it was well, pretty much everyone said it was like a gimme game. Uh, we have France on Wednesday. We had we got trounced by France on Wednesday, the twenty fourth. Let's so see. Only played one game. Was it women's maybe. Maybe it was the women's team oh, that women. had a really easy game. Uh, the U.S. is in last place in their group. Guinea, yeah. With no points. Yeah, I think we we Guinea. Uh, we have no points, so we didn't oh, beat anybody. Definitely. We lost. We have only played France. We lost to France. Guinea lost to New Zealand. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know our under twenty three stats. I know Polisic and uh, MacArthur. I think is his name. Like our two superstars that are on the USA men's USA team. No MacArthur, no Polisic. Yeah. It's mixed something. Um, ne- neither of them are playing. Like apparently, the Olympic rules in soccer is it's under twenty three. But you have three exemptions. So, like, there was apparently talk that uh, Messi was going to go after Copa because he's definitely retiring after this summer. Right. Um, but he, he was going to be one of their age exemptions, but he's now injured, so he's not taking that, that spot. But it looks like Argentina lost to Morocco. Wow, that's a group. Iraq, Morocco, Argentina, Ukraine. Argentina should destroy that group. Oh, Morocco, what was it? Might have been the South Africa uh, World Cup. I think they ended up doing really well. I mean, generally speaking, most of these groups are two. There, there's, it's a two and two group. I don't know. I don't know the. I don't know the formatting of the. Uh, they try to spread it out where you have like a super group and a. Yeah, I don't know the formatting of. Uh, of the Olympics tournament versus World Cup and Copa and stuff like that. Because I know, like, in when, when FIFA does the World Cup draw, it's there's, like, different lottery things, like right. the big lottery things. I'm assuming they do it kind of like that. <clears throat> to where they kind of sep- you know, pre-separate it and be like, okay, here's the top ten teams. Right. It's like one, one drum of, like, the best so that they end up being in different groups. Yeah. So you don't end up having this, like, super group that's France, England, Germany – and uh, Brazil in the World Cup. Like, that would be the worst thing ever for the World Cup if that was one group. Because you'd have these other groups that have nobody in them. And you have, th- you know, three or four of the best teams in the world in the same group. That'd be brutal. Two of them aren't making it through. Yeah. And so it generally, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, that's our World Cup coverage, yeah. as mentioned. Is there more to the soil right. science thing you want to talk about? Which one? Soil science? Yeah, I just say oh. it's, it's it, like, apparently, you know. I guess we're known. I think I think that's what I sent you. I was like, I didn't know UT was known for our soil science program. Well, apparently the guy, or turf science, this guy that's one of the top people in at UT is a was at Michigan State, and that's why part of why Michigan State's involved. And so, like all these different people at Michigan State and UT have been under his tutelage for years. Right. <clears throat> um, and apparently, they brought uh, FIFA had come to Knoxville after I, I, I because they are testing some of their stuff on the. One FC field, huh. 
um, and that they brought some some of the managers or some some top people th- from FIFA as well as the uh, grounds like head grounds person and or owner of the buildings, whomever would be the like the the site manager for you know the Superdome or whatever it is that's going to be one of the hosts to come up and check this field out, and apparently like you know. It's one of the best fields in the country. <laughs> is our Regal Stadium <laughs> off the side of the campus, <clears throat> as far as as far as turf turf surfaces goes. Right, right. But I mean, they also have I don't know how many millions, <clears throat> how many tens or t- tens or maybe a hundred million dollars that FIFA has invested in the research to do this. That's getting used to test it. Yeah. Um. But it was just kind of like it, it, it's. I don't know. Maybe I'm more geeked about it because of the random perfection of the story. <clears throat> Because uh, Owen, the summer intern for the Compass Guys, is from Michigan State. That's where he's studying journalism. Um, and he's a huge soccer fan. Like, I think two or three weeks in a row when he's come to do the podcast, he's wearing a jersey of some sort. Yeah. Like, he had a bar He had one of the uh, – what do you have? He had uh, uh, an Irish national team jersey a couple weeks ago. Or a Celtic jersey, excuse me. A couple weeks ago, and then last today he had it was some. It was a one of the powder blues with the bar. That's the Barclays, is their big is their lead sponsor. I can't remember who it is now. Uh, and so we he and I just City? maybe he and I have just kind of joked soccer on it, like talked soccer a little bit on and off because you don't find a lot of people have any interest in it around here. I think at at odd. I think is their uh, big sponsor. I don't know. I don't remember who it is, but it or it might have been Hotspur. It might have been the Hotspur's logo, and I'm confusing it with the bar. It's got the little logo. rooster. Yeah, on the ball. Yeah, yeah, that might have been what it was today. Anyway, uh... but it was just kind of it was kind of uh, uh, humorously adorable that the kid from Michigan State who's in Knoxville got to cover the story of Michigan State and UT Knoxville working on a thing for soccer, which he is a big fan of the sport. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I invited him. I'm going to try to get him in before he goes back. Um, I invited him today to come and sit with us because I would like to talk to him about like, what, what's it like going to journalism school? Like, what do you like? How does that work nowadays? Like, cause it, it, what's it been like with the kind of like attack on journalism, right? With the attack on right that and also just the shift in the way journalism works. Like some of the best names just online. So a lot of the best names in journalism are independent, you know, sub stacks and, or in some of these online news companies that aren't your big players. Like, you know, like as Jesse's talked about it a few times, like he worked for New York times for a long time. Like that's the pinnacle. That was a pinnacle of print journalism for years. Right. And it probably still is to some extent, but you know, like what's your dream hope goal? What would be the best job you could ever have as a journalist when you're graduating from high or college in the next couple of years? I don't know if the New York times is still that answer. So I'm curious his take on that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, and I want to make fun of him because he keeps talking about <laughs> it. Just cracks me up. It's not his fault. <clears throat> he talks about how engaged and involved everybody he seems to talk to is in local politics. And then last week he was talking about how engaged and involved people seem to be in the local music scene. It's like you literally took a job with two guys that are the most engaged and involved in both those items. So everybody you've met through them are people that are on that list that you're talking about. Now, who keeps up with the music scene? Uh, uh, Scott and Jesse. Oh, okay. Because they do one of the one of the, one of the, they do <clears throat> um, blank magazine, which is the kind of newish attempt at Metro Balls. Uh, blank and Compass do a a, a a weekly curated live music thing that's really cool. It's a it's a free well, newsletter. Who was if anybody was yeah. still doing that? Uh, Knoxville Mix is what it's called. You can go to knoxvillemix.com, I believe. Um, and register to get the weekly email for free. Every Wednesday you get an email, and it's like two or three items every day until the next Wednesday. So they'll be like, Wednesday, there's these couple things going on. Thursday, da 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 Friday, and, you know, some of it's like, you know, like we had What's-His-Face. Uh, um, I can't remember who we had now, but it's like Ben Folds was in a couple weeks ago. Like that was where, I didn't see that. You know, so they'll, they'll mention the big – but it's, you know, it's a little snippet. Like a, a short paragraph, and and Scott, Jesse, and and Rusty from Blank are the writers of each of the little snippets, and so they go through everything that's on the possible on the calendar and kind of narrow it down to a little bit more of a, and they try to keep it pretty broad. So there's jazz stuff, and there's rock, and there's pop, and there's uh, like more arts and culture than it is modern and stuff like that. Like uh, tonight, uh, if it's too late, Friday night, uh, there's uh, an African drum festival down in Market Square. Nice. 
apparently like a couple of different big, big fucking African drum groups. Like it's like 20 guys just pounding away. Probably really good. Probably really fun to hang out and listen to. I mean, that used to be an ongoing thing for a while. Yeah. It may still be, but that was one of their featured items in the in the newsletter this week. All right. So while I'm promoing other people, KnoxvilleMix.com, check them out. Get in and get groovy with the uh, the the musical happenings uh, around town. But they do like movies and stuff too. Like Imes is doing a movie, a special movie night. I can't remember what it is, but it's like movies under the stars at Imes. Um, there's something I don't think that's this week, but the, the, I don't know. Anyway, it's a check it out back to the beginning of the point is is that this owen has no idea what knoxville's like because the two guys that he spends all his time with in knoxville are right. the most connected to the two things that they talk about all the time and so everybody that he talks to through them you know you're like dude you gotta get away from us all right you got like you gotta, yeah you like, gotta see some of this stupid out there well it's, it is because i like he did he said it, he was talking about the politics thing a couple of weeks ago and i was like i'm sorry man i don't want to interrupt your guys podcast to deflate his bubble here but that ain't true at all and proof of it is if you look at early voting stats smooth transition into local politics talk early voting stats are in the dumper again yeah i saw chris had some statements in like wate or wbir the other day yeah it's bad and kind of compared them. he was like yes they're down even compared apparently to four right, years ago right. when there was a, a senate race right you know and it was you know we were in the hot and heaviest uh, yes please and if you can grab a line with it that would be my favorite thing ever yeah, and I mean, apparently, uh, the uh, um, you know, you got to look back at, at what the what the climate was with the bad turnout last time, and you look at that climate and you compare it to today, and it's like, well, that was a very energized climate we were in back in twenty twenty. Now, for a state and local primary with the county general, yeah, it's it's always the weird gap. This is why I argue to death that. Most people didn't actually vote for their county commissioner. I might vote like I, I I would argue fairly regularly that most people will say they voted for their county commissioner, but probably didn't. They'll say they voted for the lock director, but they probably didn't because this is going on right now, and so many people skip this election because they're like, well, I did the presidential primary that included the primary for this county commission race. And then I voted in November. So I'd had my primary and my general. And it's like, well, you skipped one that was there in the middle. Like, you actually skipped two because there's, the, there's a couple primaries. We've talked about it a few times. How did the, how did the vote turn out for the, uh, the vote whether or not to vote for the law director? Uh, they were, the, how did it turn out verbiage-wise or in function? Like the, in, in function. The law director's on the ballot right now. I was, yeah, my dad said he voted for him, but I couldn't remember if that was. I thought there was something you, that a question like that or some kind of yes. constitutional amendment had to be on two two consecutive. No, the state level state state constitution amendment. Yes, charter amendment. No. Okay. Charter amendment. You can have a groundswell one, which it's people put through the effort and the bajillion petitions get signed, and they can force one on the ballot, or more likely the county commission, or we have a city council one right now, which is kind of neat. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, County Commission does a, a special set of meetings on a charter amendment meetings. They put these charter amendments forth, and by rule, the charter amendment goes to the law department to write the actual question that goes on the ballot. And so, yes, Law Director Book, who's a douche canoe, uh, got a charter amendment before him on which he had to write the question on, do you guys want to have the ability to vote for me again or not? So he had a little bit of a, what we might call a conflict of interest in being the one to write this uh, because it directly involved him in his office. And do you so like me? Circle yes. His no. verbiage was, do you want to keep the right to vote for this office? Yeah. Which you put something in that terminology, 99 out of 100 people who don't know what the fuck's going on, which is 98% of the people are going to say, I do not want to give up that right. I don't know what it is, but I want to keep the right to do whatever it is. Right. Uh, just don't take rights away from me. So that brings us to the city right now um, has a couple of, which is weird because the city has odd year elections, but if they're going to do a charter amendment, it has to be on uh, even year ballots that include, that does not include the mayor. I think it, no, it could just any, it has to be on a November what was the rule on it? It might have to be on the presidential ballot. 
So it has to be on the same ballot as the presidential ballot. I think that's the rule. So it's every presidential race. If they put a charter amendment up, it has to be on that ballot. So no city elections are going on, but city voters only will get on their ballot. Uh, there will be three questions on this ballot that are charter amendment questions, all involving voting rights, which is interesting because this is going to be another one. This law department, because the city law department is not elected, <clears throat> may have less of an interest in being weird with their wording because it's not going to screw with their jobs, theoretically. But at the same time, they are they work at the the pleasure of the mayor's office. And so American Cannon's stance on this might matter, might be worth hearing. Um, I actually asked the Compass guys, I was like, where's Ken Cannon on this? I'm like, well, she was out sick at the meeting that they started this conversation on, so we don't have official statement from her or her office on where she's at on <clears throat> the rules that they came up with. So there's three items. So item number one is uh, Andrew Roberto's um, kind of mixed bag of keeping things the way they are. If we remember city elections, it is a district primary with a citywide general. Um, and so state law came in Elaine Davis through Eric waiter, or I'm sorry, Eric waiter through Elaine Davis, uh, got state law to remove the exemption that Knox County was using to do that format. Um, so by next year on the odd number year, they have to have this corrected. Now, if it's not corrected on the charter, it goes to state law. So that's essentially what's going to happen. The question is, do you want to keep elections the same way they are basically, or do you want to revert to district elections? Well, let's take that back. Do you want to keep elections the same way they are? Yes or no? Yes means yes, you want to keep them the same way they are. No means it will revert to what is state law, which is how everything else does around here. Uh, uh, district primary, district general. Question two is going to be, do you want to move district five city council seat race from the mayor cycle to the off cycle? which is just kind of a silly thing. Who know? I don't know how it got started. There's six districts in the city right now. Um, uh, I'll go back. I'll go back to the first question here in just a second because I got a correction to make. But there's six cities in the district. One, two, three, four, and six are on off cycle with the mayor's race. Five is with the mayor's race. And so they want to move it so that all six districts or what will be called regions, if Roberto's thing goes his way, will be on the same ballot. Okay. And so basically you would have one ballot that's all your district slash regional um, seat races and then one ballot, which is the uh, municipal judge seat, the mayor's race, and something else. And then your – oh, sorry. Yeah, municipal judge, mayor, and then your three at-larges would be on one ballot and then your six commis six districts would be on the other ballot, which at the time – I'm good with that. That makes sense to me. Um, and then question three is some weird tiebreaker rule. Um, apparently the, the, the current charter says if there's a tie that the, uh, county commit or city council gets to pick the tiebreaker. You should do a coin flip. I mean, it's functionally correct. It's not any better than, and this is one that Amelia put this one up because Amelia got burnt by the current method because it's not essentially you get you get through a if it's a general election it has to go to a runoff there has to be another election right but in the primary if you tie now if you tie for first that, then that's your one two and they go on to the general right. it's really if you tie for second that matters and that happened to em Amelia a couple of years ago and the tiebreaker is that goes to city council city council gets to pick which two of those gets the nod and then that person goes against whoever won that district in the primary, which in this case was Lauren Ryder, who went on to win the seat anyway. Yeah. So it didn't really make a difference in in in, in kind. And so Amelia's uh, wants it to be the top two vote getters, which could get awkward because let's say, um, you know, I win the vote, I, I win the district by large, which you guys tied. Then we'll have three of us will go to the general. Because it's not two people, it's the top two vote getters. And so the, I got the most votes. You and that other person got the second most votes. You both go on to the general. <clears throat> and so it could potentially, like, it, it, I actually kind of like it. It makes sense to me because then it's like, well, you get to vote again on whatever. If it at least goes back to an election that's going to break the tie, which it doesn't really matter because probably the person that won the district is going to win it anyway. Yeah. You know, and then, but inversely, it could be if we tied for first the third place person would also get to come along for the ride 
still. So basically, anytime you'd have a tie, you'd basically have a three-way general, which they don't want. So back to the first part. Um, Andrew Roberto is playing, which I think is holy bullshit. I think it's terrible because it's essentially keeping what it is. But the state says you can't have district, you can't have districts, and you can't use districts and have um, full municipality elections by district. So right now we have district primaries. We have we have six districts, but when it gets to the general election, it is a um, citywide race for all of them. All right. Um, and so what what Roberto's suggestion is, we change it to. Uh, regions we'll have six regions in the city and each uh to run for a region you have to be a resident of that region but it will be an at-large primary citywide primary citywide general which is interesting because roberto's in district two which is the highest turnout district regularly like significantly higher turnout in district two than any other one which in turn is going to mean that district two is going to have an outsized influence on all the seats yeah. District 2 voters will have an outsized influence on all the seats in the city. That seems a little problematic to me. Don't know. So I'm hoping that one fails, and I think I missed something, too. One of the one of the rules includes uh, – uh, oh shit, what was it called? There's one more thing, and I just blanked out on it. I'll come back to it when I remember it. Um, damn it, what was that? Oh, uh, if uh, 50% more – 50% or more in a primary – uh, you don't have to. The, you already won. You don't go to a general, oh, yeah. which is what the city, what's what the city mayor, uh, the city judge does already. But it would make it so all the city council seats would would match that format. I don't like that format. Not so much that it doesn't. It's re, you're repeating an election for no good reason, which is theoretically true. But turnout is so bad in city elections, and even worse in city primaries. So we're literally talking about the least attended. Election, a city primary is the least voted in election of all the elections we have in, in Knoxville, and Knox County. That one, if you could just win fifty percent of that, nothing else matters. You get a seat. That seems kind of sh- kind of crappy to me. Like I think if you're if it's a two way race, it goes to the general, and you just skip the primary. Just don't do a primary. It's a two way race. You don't need a primary because you're not trying to whittle down the field. Or you go to partisan races and you're guaranteed to have a primary and a general. Yeah. But nobody wants partisan where it doesn't need to be, which I'm, I'm – whatever. I'm per, I prefer them not to be. I prefer partisan – I prefer the partisan primary process, process gets gets burnt out anyway. I hate the partisan primary. You go do your caucus thing and we'll put – you know, that's fine. We'll do it that way. That's what, that's That's how I'd like to see it. I think the only way to do that would be to then also take the parties out of, which you can't really do anyway. Yeah, you know, you, I mean, it's just you get, like, if, if I mean, really to be uh, the... the I mean, essentially, it's still like a de facto, still party primaries. Yeah, but you guys do that on your own. Leave us alone. We don't need to mess with that. Close the primary. I mean, you could do it through the election commission and, and the Knox County Republican Party or whomever can pay the election commission to administer an election for them, but make it clear that this is not an election. This is a party popularity contest. I don't know. You figure out some for, some some some, verb, some sort of verbiage to explain what it is, because the current version makes people think they actually are part of a process when they're really not. Yeah. Um, because this is a party decision, and you know, if it's a party decision, then the party should be the one making the decision. I have no issue with that. And if you're not part of the party, you should be excluded. I don't have a problem with that. I just, you know, if they're going to do it that way, that'd be great. And then hopefully more real independent candidates will come along because, you know, I didn't get to vote in this primary because I'm not a, I'm not a registered Republican. I don't want to be a registered Republican. I want to pick the person who I think is best for the job. That's crazy talk. You've got to be at a party, man. I mean, I've already gotten a couple of them. I've already got a couple of them this year where it's like, you know, like I was talking, I've told, I've been on air a couple of times. I'm probably voting for RFK. Oh, you're trying to let Trump win, aren't you? I don't know. If I wanted Trump to win, I'd just vote for Trump. Yeah, but by a vote for RFK is a vote for Trump. It's like, no, a vote for RFK is a vote for RFK. <laughs> Let me ask you this on the topic of presidential whatever. We'll go national again because this, this got me heat, hot, heat, hot and bothered earlier this week. Oh, gosh. When you elect a president, when you go to the ballot, and this is a question for all y'all. Email me, almost in agreement at gmail.com. 
Have you ever in your life gone to a presidential election thinking, I am voting for the vice president? No. Okay. Just making sure. Because that's my take on it, too. I didn't vote for Joe Biden, or I didn't vote for Kamala Harris. I voted for Joe Biden. I didn't vote for Mike Pence. I voted for Donald Trump. Mike Pence is on the ticket, but I didn't vote for Mike Pence. For the record, I didn't vote for either one of those. I voted for Joe Jorgensen. I don't even remember who VP was, so I certainly didn't vote for whoever that person was because I don't even remember their name. My point is I got in a little tiff on Facebook like I like to do uh, with my good friend Brian. He came out of the work. He is not dead, everybody. I'm good. To, I'm, glad, I'm excited to announce that Brian Cornelio is not dead. He is alive, and he's back on Facebook. He's ta- he took a little sabbatical, apparently. Um, and so all this stuff, Tim Burchett said some shit on Kamala Harris. We can talk about that here in a second. The, uh, um, which that's, there's a whole conversation to have there. We'll get there in a second. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, so somebody, Brian had, uh, reposted somebody else's post, which was like comparing Tim Burchett's election record and how many people vote for, voted for him to Kamala Harris. And, you know, they had the list of different offices that they both held, like, you know, state's attorney general for Kamala, state senator for Kamala, all the different stuff that she's done through her career, um, and vice president and whatever. And then, you know, Burchett was what? He was a mayor, one of the mayors? Yeah, he was a county mayor. Yeah, so he's... Once, not you, twice. You know, he might have held some state office, whatever. He's been elected a few times for a few different places. It doesn't really matter what it is. And so, they, it, but, you know, in their last election, Burchett got, you know, 70-something thousand votes, whatever he got for his last uh, uh, House of Reps election right. for uh, two, four years ago, six years ago, whenever it was. And then they said 81.6 million votes for Kamala Harris in her last election. And I was like, I know there's a lot of people in California, but that seems high. And so I went up and I Googled how many people live in California, like 36, 39 million, something like that. I was like, okay, so you didn't get 80 million votes in California. And, and did, was there a national race that I can't, I'm not, I, what, did she run for something that I'm not thinking of nationally? And so, like I, I and I and I said, I said, quote, real question. What race did Kamala Harris get eighty one point six million votes in? I'm not trying to pick a fight. Like it was a real question, and the response was, in the twenty twenty presidential race. I said no, Joe Biden got eighty one point six million votes or whatever total. It was more than that. I thought. I thought it was like. No. I thought I thought the total electorate was like two hundred million. Whatever, fine. We'll just just assume that stat is the right number. And I was like, no, Joe Biden got that. He's like, no, you vote for Joe, you vote for president and vice president. I was like, no, you don't. Because it's not like I can go. Well, I want to vote for Joe Biden and Mike Pence. I don't get to split them up by which I which preference I have. And I said, can you find me one person in Knoxville, one person in Knoxville who will honestly tell you that they voted for Kamala Harris for vice president? And not for Joe Biden as president. Al, hell, I'll, if you could find me somebody that said they voted for Joe Biden and not not Trump in the 2020 election, I'd be surprised if you could find that for me right now. And then he's like, no, this is how you do elections. Like, no, it's not. Nobody is voting for vice president. And I'll even give you a little bit of a little bit, a little bit to say that, yes, with Biden's age and some of the arguments about Biden's age, even in 2020, there probably were people that were looking a little bit deeper into the vice president pick than maybe they had in the past. But nobody voted for Joe Biden because of who his vice president was. That's that's a little bit too totalitarian. Some people probably did, not many. I don't, I don't think as many on the Democratic side really looking at that. I, I think more so on the GOP side. If kind of I think my spent, when they were already playing it up, they're like, yeah, well, when well, when he gets declared insane, you know, then we're going to have Kamala as the supreme leader, <laughs> woke Marxist. <Yeah. laughs> I'm just saying, like, I think that's one of those. You're right, you're right. I, I, right, and you're. But that furthers my point, though. It's like, you know, nobody ever votes for vice president. Right. You vote for the president, and that other person comes along for the ride. Like I can't. Like yeah, I, maybe her family, maybe some people that she, some of her donors and some people that she's worked with in the past might have picked that side of the ticket because it was her. I doubt it. Most of them are going to pick D, no matter who, or blue. I'm sorry, blue, no matter who. You know, most of the people that have supported her throughout her career are probably picking whoever the Democratic nominee for president is. You don't vote for vice president. And it got me really upset because he kept trying to defend it. And I was like, no, man, you're fucking crazy. This is this is crazy talk. And this is why I can't take you seriously on anything else you say, because you're defending this ideal, which you are the only person on the planet who would even pretend to defend this ideal because nobody votes for vice president. 
And then I was like, hey, let me ask a question. Let me let me let me let me serve you an assist here. How many votes did she get when she w- ran for Senate for the state of California? And it's like 20 something million or whatever. And I was like, put that stat on and none of my bitching happens because that's true. 20 million people voted for Kamala Harris for Senate for the state of California. I'm sure she probably has a much larger. Well, and, that's a that's state race. So that's right. statewide. And, and, and what the third, what the third, second most populous state or is it California? The most populous, most populous state in the nation. What is a top top so. uh, yeah. top two or three at, at the at worst. Yeah. But I think it's the most popular state in the nation. So she won a popularity contest in the largest state in the nation. It is likely that she has more votes than anybody ever in any seat other than the actual president of the United States. And because what other you don't vote in the other federal seats nationally. She has probably she she probably has the most votes for her in a single election other than any presidential race. In the history of, maybe not in the history of time, you might have different years in California. There's better turnout, but she's probably top ten all time in votes received, possibly in a single state race. But but I mean, if, but if if your point is that more people chose this person, because this is in, this is coming off of the DEI conversation, if more people chose this person than this person, which they're totally different seats, they're totally different sets of demographics, they're totally different populations of people who can possibly vote for them, use one that's real don't use the vice president's one as an example use a state she she won attorney general in the state of california that's a statewide race and she won the senate seat in california that's a statewide race both of those are more than burchett could get if he cheated and tripled the popular possible population of his district and you make your point but instead you throw this stupid fucking number on there and all i'm going to do is pick a fight about that okay. I, I can't help myself i'm sorry i'm sorry you let it go that far, <laughs> <laughs> it, but 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 it's uh, you wanted to win. Okay, it's not I wanted to win. It's a sock- uh, you, well, I guess you you wanted him to kind of concede a little bit, right? Which he's not going to concede. But that's right. but I think that's part of the point. Part of the point is that that's the that's the amount of rot. That's the willy. That's that's how far people are willing to go to lie for a certain thing because it matches their political ends. It's not true. It's just not true. And that's okay if it's not true. And that's okay if maybe you got swept in the moment and passed it along not thinking about it. And then when somebody calls your attention, might be, you know what? That's a good point. Here's what she did in her, in her Senate race. That still illustrates the point I was trying to make. Yeah, perfect. Great. Right. And that's that. But instead, you're trying to bullshit your way to defend it because you feel like you need to. Because I don't know why. Because you hate Trump that much. Congratulations. And what, what, was, what was the point he was trying to make anyway? That- well, she was more popular than he was in general, just because yeah. she got more votes. Right. Well, more qualified, more popular, that kind of stuff. And that's coming back from the I DEI. Mean, qualification statement. has nothing to do with electability, right? And it's also, you know, I have a problem with this with this complete rejection of the DEI part of the conversation for Kamala. Okay. Because on the campaign trail, while he was still primarying against Kamala Harris, he said, "I will have a black woman vice president." I promise you, I will pick a black woman vice president now kamala is a black woman so she checks that box there are other black women out there or a person of, i can't remember if it was a black woman or it was a woman of color at least that he said and so even if it even if kamala was the best possible pick even just for political reasons not even experience or knowledge or anything like that just for political purposes even if she was the best possible pick from that when you make that statement prior to it or even anywhere in the conversation that at least puts out the, the, the conversation piece that you excluded people from the possible pool based on their skin and gender. I can see that. Yeah. Like you, you did. I mean, you did, you, you didn't look at people according to Joe Biden himself. We are not looking at anybody who isn't a black woman. So there are, there are black men, there are white men, there are, uh, any other combination of those things that you could put together that they didn't even look at because it didn't fulfill his promise he made. Now, does that mean Kamala is or is not better than those people? No, but it opens the door wide the fuck open for Burchett to say something like that and it be plausibly true and believably true. Well, then stick to that, but he tried to double down and say she well, wasn't qualified. Well, if, if, at least in electability parts of conversation, she had her high... In the Democratic primary in the 2020 cycle was 4% of the Democratic population. That was her high 
while she was running through it. I think she took second in Iowa after Pete and like fourth in what's New Hampshire's next. And then she dropped out before South Carolina. Like she didn't like she was like of the because there were like nine there for a minute, right? Yeah, it was a good bit. She was never she was never really in the top two or three of the nine, and there were th- yeah she was in the top three or four. There were four women in that set. There were uh, three people of color. I believe so. Yeah. You know, there was plenty of other options if you wanted to do a diversity hire that you could have picked that may or may not have been you know. And again, one of the one of the things too, it's like well to to push back on purchase things like what's the qualifications here. Like what are what's a real good? Why, how are you? How would you state somebody is or isn't qualified for president? Like by the technical definition, she's a U.S. born. She's a native U.S. born person who was over the age of thirty five. She could technically run for president. There's no other qualifications required to get the job. Yeah, linear district. Well, you have to be born in, in. You have to live in the United States. Yes, you have to be a resident. Actually, I don't know if you have to be a resident. That's a good question. Constitutionally, it's you have to be born, you have to be a, a, a natural born American citizen over the age of 35. And that's the only, I'm pretty sure that's the only qualifiers. Oh, vice, sorry, I was, I was saying her state race. Yeah, for state races, there's, sorry, well, so, yeah, right. That's what I was, yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying. Right, right. But I mean, it's still the same thing. It's like, you know, you have to live here. Okay. Yeah. So she's qualified by definition. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, that's a pushback on Burchard. Functional definition by the, per the Constitution, she is fully qualified. Are you pushing back on Burchett? I'm pushing back on both sides of it. Okay. I'm just saying, if 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 Biden didn't say what he said going into the prime or during the primaries in 2020, then Burchett's statement is actually truly sexist and racist. But with Trump's or with Biden saying what he said, it opens the door for this to be a conversation. And so I will agree with Burchett on that part of it. Although I disagree with Burchett because. I don't think she's a good candidate. I don't think I don't I don't think highly of her for a thousand reasons. But qualified, you know, that's that's Jimmy Carter was president for fuck's sake. You know, what's the qualifications that guy had? He was a governor of Georgia. That's right. Just kidding. Was- <laughs> I don't know. There's plenty. There's been plenty of idiots that have been president. Trump is the president. Actually, I think I mentioned this before. Like many historians consider Carter to be possibly the most intelligent president. Yeah. But he was also, had. but he was also one of the least popular presidents we've ever had. Um, and so intelligent he came up, experienced, he, he came in at a rough time and had tried to be that more kind of like folksy. Right. But intelligence and experience doesn't win elections. You know, so I guess the question that should be asked to Burchett is what, what are qualifications for vice president? Is JD Vance is qualified to be vice president. Guy wrote a book and has been what a state rep in Ohio for a it's year. A senator, yeah, I was thinking he was a rep, but I think he's actually a senator. Whatever, it's, but he's uh, visit, yeah, but didn't but have an a, office before that. He's a freshman, right? But he's a freshman senator or representative. Like this is his first term. Yeah, so he doesn't have a ton of experience in in his lifespan. No. He also is not very good at geography, apparently. Do I? His uh, hillbilly. What is hillbilly elegy? The book that he's famous right. for, or whatever. Right. Well, it's like it's supposed to like it's a story about him growing up or whatever, and he grew up in Western Ohio. But it's not Appalachia. Like there are technical definitions, and even loose definitions that I wouldn't consider the Ohio India Indiana border Appalachia. All right. I mean, have you? you that's the way he's been there this whole life. I was thinking he was from like kind of Virginia area or something. I don't know, but that's he's like, I mean, he's like, he is the antithesis of everything that Trump bitches about. He's an Ivy League grad. Like I, I thought he's he was more modern, super rich. I, guess I just didn't know much about he's, him. He's he, well, he is what Kamala is. Honestly, he's a he's a chameleon. He's never held to anything for a long period of time. He doesn't have. How's, sorry, how is he like Kamala? They 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 are not. They have not been consistent over their their at least public career with any parts or opinions because jd vance used to hate trump and was very vocal about disliking trump called him hitler <laughs> yeah and now is is excited to be his running mate yeah. kamala harris is you know like she what in, in in that okay go back to 2020 go where you watch your all your primary stuff <clears throat> you're gonna hear kamala trying to talk social or not social justice but criminal justice reform and all that kind of stuff and she is functionally distancing herself from her own prosecutor Tutorial history 
and she's trying to or, and or frame her history as a prosecutor and being criminal justice reform, which there's no evidence of it actually being that. But she's trying to frame it that way because that was the popular motif of the 2020s. And now that she's running against Trump, it's like, you have you seen him yet? There's been a ton of memes running around the prosecutor versus the felon. Yeah. You know, and so she's leaning hard into her prosecutorial law and order background now because it's advantageous against Trump. Where back in 2020, it was not as a popular, especially on the left, George Floyd, all the shit going on around that, the Black Lives Matter movement, all those things going on. She tried to distance herself from her own history as a prosecutor. I don't remember trying she to voted, herself from it. She voted against uh, a bunch of Obama stuff when she was a senator in California. There's a bunch of history. You, you'll, if you want to dig through it, you can dig through it, but it's there. She has changed, she has changed on some major issues pretty blatantly with the wins. And so you got something you can specifically point me to. Well, again, I mean, the 2020, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's the one. Well, that's, I'm assuming you saw it somewhere recently. So don't pretend uh, like that you went back and watched all the fucking debates and just no, pulled this out of your ass. You're so, right. But it, so please don't pretend like I'm just asking you, please just send me wherever you read this. Okay, that's I'll, all I'll pass read. It along. You know where I got well, it. You're like, well, I just want to watch it. You know where I got it. But um, so anyway, that's that's my take on Kamala. I don't think. I don't know. I don't. I think. I, I think the. I think she has a better chance of being president than Biden did. That's what I told you last week, and I said it, I think they're going to pick Kamala. I think um, she's the most likely. I still think that if the Democrats wanted to wanted to have a better a better shot at winning, now it's been only a week now, so we haven't gotten a lot of polling in yet. But some of the polling that's already existed is showing like a. I want to say the party gave basically money. gave anybody that wanted to run like three days, like pretty much like. Announce now if you're going to try to run against Kamala, which I don't think anybody was going to raise their hand. Yeah, that's a, you, you're allowed to. Right. You, you might get murdered for it, but you're allowed to raise your hand. Not the, 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 politi- Not career politi- murdered. Yeah. Sorry, I, I need to be care- we, we need to be care- more careful with our rhetoric, considering uh, con- considering to be honest. So yes, I apologize. I shouldn't have said murdered. you get it, it could be career suicide raising your hand in that three day window. Um. Because you're bucking the party directly, but to me, if I'm the party, like, uh, like I don't know, I, I don't know shit from shit. But if it's me, I would. Uh, 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 Whitmer, Bashirs, Andy Bashirs, yeah, Kentucky. He is a super popular Democrat governor in a super red state. You want to talk about somebody that's guaranteed to beat Trump? Andy Bashirs. He definitely has a possibility. I think he would destroy Trump. I don't. I think, I think, yeah, I think he'd be I mean, kind of the same thing with, with Gretchen Whitner with me. Like I, I don't think she would have been as much in the spotlight had the attempts on her not been there. I get it, but I, I will, I, will, I don't think Andy Bashir has as much national recognition. Either. You're right, but I, I, and I don't think, but because she's never run for president, he's never run for president, he's never been a contender in a presidential primary. Right. That's why we know Pete Buttigieg. That's why we know Cory Booker. That's why we know uh, that fat guy from New Jersey. Um, Chris Christie. Yeah. Um, well, that and the bridge thing, which was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, like there's a lot of names we know because they were presidential primary. You know, I mean, the, uh, you know, like save somebody like uh, what's right. His? But I think that's even more important. What we're like ninety days out, pretty much whatever, hundred days out. Uh, yeah, about a hundred days. I don't I think, think that's so. even more important. I think there's enough fast moving media stuff that w- that if they if they wanted to. It's, there would be enough national it, attention. It's possible, yeah. But when you're trying to win over an unknown electorate. Yeah, but you're also but you're also not trying to win over. You're just trying to say, for fuck's sake, not that guy. I mean, that's really what you're trying to do. This isn't that guy. And more importantly, this guy is not some they're leaning on that message, yes. This isn't the guy this isn't this guy isn't directly connected to the guy that we just chased out because he's too old. Because I think that's the bigger issue with Kamala to me, because she is directly connected to the guy that they just chased out. And like you said a couple of weeks ago, like how do you, if you're the party, how do you get rid of the guy who you're saying is doing great? Like how do you usher him out and say, you know, you need to keep voting for us because we're going to replace that guy that we all love with somebody different instead of just keeping him here? Well, I think the hard thing for her, for her campaign to do now is to say, is to kind of find that line between we've done good things and we're going to, we're going to do different things to be better instead of being like, Hey, we're going to, we've been doing great and we're going to keep doing great. 
Right. And she's going to have to admit, you know, some failures that have been made. Right. I mean, hell, she's got impeachment articles up against her. Yeah. That was another another Tennessee, Tennessee. rep. Woo woo. <laughs> You know, you know seemed like man, it's like two reps in a in like two days that it made national cycle. You know, there is a uh, there again. I don't agree with it whole cloth by any stretch of the imagination. But there's part of it. It's like, is there any question? Because honestly, actually, there is to me. But uh, I would as it, is there any real question that Kamala wasn't aware of the state of of Joe Biden. That she didn't spend enough time with him to, to at least think to herself maybe. But then when she goes out in public, no, Joe's great. He's like, he he leaves us all behind. We're all tr- trying hard to keep up with him. And in that same line of thought, you can't tell me that other GOP members hadn't sat down in the Oval Office with Biden. So I'm sorry. If you're going to point fingers at Kamala, you got to point everyone else that sat down with him in the past six months. I would argue that any of the GOP, like McCarthy or whoever the new McCarthy's speaker is. has been out for a while. Yeah, whoever the new speaker is. All right. I mean... He's probably made mention. I, I, I would say he comes out of it and says that guy's old, and needs to go away. I don't know. I don't know the. I don't know specifically. Like, sure, that's fine. Impeach them all. I'm good with that too. Don't get me wrong. Well, you, I, I'm just saying. I think it's a hard argument if you, to make. If you were part of covering up the condition of the president of the United States, who was physically, if if the argument is that he's physically incapable of doing the job, or meant physically slash mentally incapable of doing the job, and you were aware of it and did nothing, then yeah, you you have failed us as a nation and should lose your job. I'm I don't okay think he's premise. mentally incapable of doing the job. I do. I think it's hard. How do you how do you make the argument again? This is another one. How do you make the argument that I am unfit to continue the job? Did he say he was unfit? in six months? Did he say he was unfit? He didn't say it. No. Okay. He said he th- he said he thinks he could still do it. Okay. He thinks he could run win and win another term and and run a, and and be president for four four and a half more years. Okay, it sounded like you were saying that he was saying it. It sounds to me like uh, like. I don't know, Nancy Pelosi and uh, Chuck Schumer and those guys don't think he can. Well, actually, they just don't think he can win, I think is the reality. I, it's not, I think it was more It's not a question of his ability to do the job. It's a question of whether he's going to have the job to do or some other person with the D is going to have the job to do. I think it was just quickly out. apparent that he had lost confidence of the base, yeah. So, uh, anyway. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I just don't buy into the whole, yes, he's getting old. I can find you many clips of... Trump saying weird, stupid shit that I'm like, is he okay? I, I, hey, he could not. He could be disqualified from running for president too. I'm okay with that. Okay. I mean, yeah, you know, that that's not an argu- That's not a winning argument for me. Well, no, but I, I hear more things being said directly just about like Joe Biden. I know he's the current president, so he's the I, one. Well, in the that I, I mean, I I, I I think the best, the 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 most salient moment from the debate was Biden went on for a minute about whatever, and whoever the. Who was the whoever the host was was like Mr. Trump your response and Trump said I have no idea what he just said. Who was the host for that? Who's CNN? CNN. I don't whatever. Dick Tapper. I think yeah. Was. Whatever. Whoever it was, but they like you know playing proper debate format. I'm not trying to right. throw Tapper under the bus on this. Biden says some shit. Tapper says Mr. Trump, would you like to respond to that? And Trump says I have no idea what he just said. I don't understand what he was just talking about. And I didn't understand it either. And I was watching it happen same time Trump was because it was a live debate. Now, is Trump capable of saying crazy shit? Yes. Is it at least less apparent that he is? Whatever. I don't want to argue this thing anymore. That's fine. I I, I, I think it is clear visually in uh, when they come out in public and talk. Uh, at least if we're going to have a qualitative, if, it's, if, if we can only play the game where we're comparing the two, yeah. Trump is a lot more physically and cognitively coherent than Biden is. Okay, you don't think that's a fair statement? Not by much. I, I again, this is that's not to say that Trump isn't fucking crazy. I'm talking about crazy, but we're, I'm just talking about stringing coherent sentences together as well. All right. Uh, so the Secret Service doesn't go on roofs that have slants. Apparently, did what? you watch any of that coverage? Of uh, the the, C- the, I, the Secret Service directors. Uh, uh, I saw Congress. a couple of like, clips of afterwards. We have this new strange world where all of a sudden we have some bipartisanship because we've got uh, Eric Weider and, and Amelia Parker on the same side of an issue right here in Knoxville. And then you had, was, it was uh, Camilla Jayapald and uh, God, Jim Jeffries or one of those guys, like a super GOP guy. Like it was Camilla and one of the big C- GOP guys that was laying into the Secret Service director at the Jim Jordan? It might have been. 
Hakeem, Hakeem Jeffries. Jeffries. Yeah, I mix it. Yeah, I could, okay. I could play it. My bad. I don't, it might not have been Jim Jordan either. To be honest, I don't remember who the Republican was, but it was just back and forth. Wait a minute. What? You can't tell me this. You can't do that. You don't understand this. Why, how is it possible that you had a roof 130 yards away from the stage that you didn't have eyes on? That you didn't put anybody on? This wasn't part of the pre-planning. We identified it as a as 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 a spot, but we didn't see the need to put anybody there. How is that possible? And like, it was just like, yeah. One thing I read was like the state police were inside the building. They were in the lower level, but I think they were they were supposedly in charge of like securing that building. But apparently, there's also there's, there's a lot of lapses and apparently in security. Yeah, not about a lot of lapses, but it, well, I mean, he goes. I had this a, conversation a with that it happened. I had this conversation with Anthony. We were talking about it, and he's he was the one who corrected me on the. I, I sorry, go ahead. He was the one that corrected me on the capabilities of an AR-15, yeah, um, and its ability to make a 150-yard shot pretty well if you do de- have a decent yeah, control we, of the weapon or whatever. Topic this last uh, time. Uh, but we talked about. I talked further with him about it. About like, do we really think that the Secret Service has the best of the best in what we have to offer in security services? I would bet not. I would say they've got top one percent. Yes, I I don't think so. I think top one percent are in private, or they're in special forces proper, and they're still working. You have I would think I would think the best you have in Secret Service are guys that aged out or or burnt out of like real field work in like no, most a SEAL taken, team or something like that. Yeah, yeah, most of them are, are taken from former special forces, right? But they're the aged out version of them. They're not the best of the best anymore. They're still fucking good. Don't get me wrong, but how many? How many do you think there are? How many? Think, how many? How many protection detail people do you think there are in the Secret Service? In total, yeah, a few hundred probably. At least, I mean, how many people right. do you think they're protecting? I guess is a better way to say it. Essentially, they have they have them, and they also have the families that they're watching. Right. And then you've got the other people as well that are scoping out. Like, hey, we, we well, may want like to Obama try still, to. Obama still has a detail. Clinton still has a detail. All right. Yep. You, you have, know, yeah, you have, you, know, you have detail with you all the all the time through, till you die, right? And so I'm saying, I think it's I think it's a higher number than that. And so when you take what I'm consuming is is very good, but not the tip top of the the spear. And I would say the tip top of what you have is probably on the current president, not on the former. And it works its way down from there. I, I could imagine that you know that they're 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 not the greatest possible options out there. It's what maybe well the greatest available. But that there's better, there's potential for better. So, anyway, I, I don't know how I got on that random tangent. Uh, I, mean, I, did, I did agree with one thing that she said, and, and kind of pushing back with, with kind of like you know, hey, didn't you guys hear there was, you know, like a suspicious person? I mean, it's kind of one of those, one of those things is you know, what do you consider cons- a suspicious person? Because I think she even pointed out, you know. Like it's an open carry state, so if someone carrying open carrying, that's it's not unusual. Someone carrying a backpack, it's not unusual. So as far as like when when do you start jumping to those conclusions? You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, obviously on this, but, but I think function. I think legally, uh, open carry doesn't apply when it's a federal federally it's a federal event like that. I think the Secret Service has the authority legally. He'd be like, yes, I understand we're in an open carry state, but you can't open carry here right now. The president's here. Right. I don't think he was open carrying. Well, I mean, he was. He was crawling across that roof with his rifle in his hand. I mean, that's theoretically open carry. Somebody had in his backpack. I don't, I don't. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, that's. A, I don't think I might have seen him with a weapon until he was. But up I mean, there. but why did she bring up this? Why, why would she bring up the idea? Well, it's an open carry state. I, I think it was a. Uh, Actually, I think it was like a state rep that had kind of brought that up. The uh, Crockett out of Florida, I think she had kind of brought that up. In trying to, I guess, kind of like make that point of, you know, or they, she was kind of making it more in a, uh, a kind of profiling situation and kind of asking, you know, do you guys have training? She's like, you know, you know, was this like oversawed of like, did your officers, you know, just kind of see this white guy and just like, oh, well, he's some kind of like maybe suspicious white guy, but he's okay. Right. So the, so the real question there is like if it was a black guy in the same situation, would you let that go? Is that what they're applying? Possibly. I think it was more just trying to like, you know, do you guys do that kind of training to actually like do that, uh, you know, kind of unbiased training basically. <coughs> 
Uh, apparently, she also said that uh, the Secret Service director at the time of Reagan's assassination attempt kept working, and uh, he he, re- he resigned immediately. <laughs> Whoever asked her is like, Do you know what the you know what the, the director or whatever did after Reagan got shot, and she said he continued to work. It's like no, he re- he resigned immediately yeah. in disgrace. <laughs> I, 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 know, I think a lot of people knew that she was going to resign. I don't know if she was more trying to save a little bit of face. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, mean I'll, I'll give her I'll credit you, for at least sitting down and sure. sitting, sitting, for, sitting in front of that. And I will say that some of the coverage, in fairness, um, that I didn't necessarily agree with uh, is that, you know, there was a lot of that good old-fashioned not answering the question kind of shit. Like, how many shell casings were there? I, I, I'm not at liberty to say I hate that answer. I hate that answer. I hate right. that answer. But it is still an ongoing investigation. But at the same time, you know, it, like even if it wasn't an ongoing investigation, it's like, well, look, you know, because some of the other questions I, I'm not answering that were like, how many how many agents did you have on site? What was your prep like look like? How did that work? And it's like, I can't, you can't expect that to be a, a nationally televised statement that person to make. Right. I'm the director of the Secret Service. I'm going to tell you exactly how we prepare for an event. All right. This is what we do. We sent 13 guys, this place, that place, this place. And then on the day of the event, we took 64 guys and whatever local law enforcement we can get our hands on, and we placed them in these strategic locations. Right. Now, you'll see over here there's a gap, but that's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. Don't, you know, if you have some nefarious plans, just ignore whatever I'm talking about right now. Like, they're not going to, like, that's a ridiculous right. thing to expect them to say. And that was some of the pushback and, I guess, some of the criticism leading up to the RNC when uh, his campaign was saying, you know, that. They weren't working with them, trying to right, work with security. And it was like, we're trying to work with you, but we can't tell you exactly what we're going to do. Well, there was some, some, there was something along the lines that, that they had asked for more. They'd asked for help, um, that they'd been consistently not getting lo- enough local support because local didn't have enough to give them. Um, and that the campaign and the Trump team was like, hey, it's clear you don't have enough people here. And there's not enough local to fill your gaps. Get some more people here. And they were refusing or saying they didn't have the ability to get more people on site. I saw some article where they had declined additional, but that was in like years past. Yeah. It wasn't wasn't any time recently, but I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I, (laughs) do we talk about the, uh, tenacious D story? Tenacious D. Oh yeah. I did see that. I mean, I don't know. That's weird. I get it. I get it from both their standpoints. Like uh, I've had, I've heard plenty of people say the phrase, like, you know, you had one job. Or don't miss, for fuck's sake. Just don't miss. Yeah. You know, I've heard plenty of people make that joke or make that reference and whatever. I mean, uh, I don't like it because the, 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 the reality of it is if that's the only way you could beat Trump, that's that, like if that's the only way we like I don't, like that. That to me is just it's just that's how sad a state of affairs we are in is that that's the only way we can guarantee that Trump isn't going to be president again. Don't think that was a thought. <laughs> I think that's I think that's a lot of people's thoughts. I think a lot of people who I don't think that was his thought in the joke. I don't, I don't think maybe not. No, no, Kyle Gass's thing. I'm not sure about, but I, I I would think that my guess would be a lot of people um, that were disappointed that it was only a piece of his ear. That their thought that 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 you know that 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 was that's their that was this was our chance to get rid of that guy. No. We missed our chance. That that was why they're disappointed. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's some of that sentiment out there. There's all sorts of weird. There, there is all sorts of weird. I just think, again, I think it's pathetic that this is the situation we're in. I think that it's still pathetic. It's a little less pathetic now that it's Kamala instead of Biden. But this is it's 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 sad yeah. that this is the best we can do. You're at some kind of weird couch thing with JD. No, all right, never mind. Oh, yeah. oh this is an interesting one. Did you hear about the uh, RFK? Not the leaked audio one, but there's a follow up conversation that apparently got is now getting leaked by people who are. Four anonymous sources um, who are who had, know the. Uh, it was very unclear when I was listening to the story on it whether who was in instigating the conversation, uh, but it was basically a Trump team. Uh, the 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 story, as I understood it, it, was the Trump team that was leaking it, and it implied at least that RFK asked for a cabinet position in exchange for an endorsement. And said, "Hey, you know what? I'm gonna drop out of the, you." you so, so that would that would require him dropping out, right? You course. promised me. You promised me uh, health and human services director. So I think that's actually specifically which one he wants. That's the the one that was 
specifically said in the league yeah. is that he said if you make him uh and again i'm not sure like it was a very unclear in the story who was the instigator whether it was the trump team saying hey RF, rfk right. you come in uh you 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 come be our HHS, hhs director and uh endorse us and that's that yeah. or if it was from the rfk campaign saying make me hhs director and i'll and i'll drop out and uh support you they have actual audio, or it's just like no. It's just four people uh, uh, who were privy to the information who all wish to remain, uh, remain anonymous, which could mean nothing, all right? But uh, you know, that's a, a the the leak on it too is also that the Trump team was like that's a little bit too obvious of a quid pro quo, and it's like for Trump, really, <laughs> he doesn't seem to have a problem with them at all. He said, uh, he said to Big Oil, give me a billion dollars and I'll do whatever you want. Like, on the record, there's recorded audio of it. I don't nice. think he has a problem with the quid pro quo game. But I mean, there's a little bit of it. Like, I could see where the RFK campaign is looking at the Biden dropout going, that's a problem for us. You think so? Sure. Because one of the things they were running on is RFK at 64 or whatever was the the young <laughs> the, the, the young buck in I'm this game. I'm the spry game. one. <laughs> You know, and <laughs> I don't qualify for Social Security yet. <laughs> right. Well, and I mean, and and realistically, like you know, uh, Democrats who are disappointed with Joe Biden might be willing to lean to RFK, where uh, Kamala changes the the dynamic of that conversation. And awesome. certainly, you know, but either either way, you know, RFK goes from the youngest to the middle candidate in age because I believe Kamala is younger than he is. Yeah. So. This and that and this and that and uh, I don't know. It was a crazy story, but it was really weird because I couldn't like it wasn't like all I wanted from 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 the story was who who instigated it because right. it almost felt like the Trump team instigated it, and, but the Trump team instigated it and the Trump team leaked it, but then the Trump team stopped it because it was too obvious of a quid pro quo. How recent was this conversation? This is sometime this take. week. It was earlier this week or late last week. Um, when the conversation happened versus when it got leaked, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, that's what I'll say. Yeah, but I think it was post. Uh, I think it was. I mean, it was post Biden dropout. So post Biden dropout. That, that factor was part of the conversation for sure, gotcha. as far as I understand it. Yeah, I mean, I've seen things pop up like "Oh, Trump tapes freaking out." Uh, I mean, I, I to be fair, I think that I think that I think the GOP is pretty pissed off that Biden quit. I think they had a much more direct game plan to win against Biden than they do now. Yeah. Um, I still, I still think their game plan is similar. They just have to change some of their tact for who their actual opponent is. But I still think that was a, this is less ideal than running against Biden. I guess that's all one thing. Apparently even I guess back in, yeah, 2020, I guess she already had some ads that were like anti-Trump. So they, they're like, we can just kind of dust these off, and bring them right <laughs> bring back, them back out. out, bring them on back out. Um, so I think it was in the guise of like, hey, you should pick me to be the Democratic candidate because I can, I can take on Trump. Yeah. Um, so I've started getting, I got some texts from Marsha today. Marsha Blackburn's been hitting me up. Um, at least this one's kind of, kind of cracked me up. But this one says, uh, early voting ends tomorrow. Democrat turnout is high in Knox County. Senator Marsha Blackburn, Congressman Tim Burchett, and all of our state and local elected Republicans need your vote now. Which is normal. Early voting tends to be more Democrats traditionally anyway. Why would she throw in there that Democratic turnout's high? Because it's to scare you, obviously. Like, oh my gosh! No, uh Honey, grab your pirates, we're going to Poland. Your your apathy is gonna your apathy is gonna end up with some woke bullshit running your your city, county, and state. Did it just come in or just came in today? Earlier today. Oh, okay. So I'd say this is a weird time to have this kind of come out. No, I was at like four thirty, five o'clock this afternoon. Um and then I got another one from her, which is a beautiful picture. Um and it's again, it's from Marsha's campaign. And so what this is to me is Marsha, Marsha's, I don't think Marsha feels threatened at all by her race. I don't think the yeah. Marsha Blackburn campaign has any concern. Yeah, I don't think she's going to, you know, take it for granted, but at the same time, I don't think she has as much to worry right. about. I don't think that she feels bad about spending her money on Republicans at large instead of just herself. I think is what's happening here. 
because both of oh, these is her campaign been doing. That? Well, that's I would say both of these two texts I got are from her campaign, but they're all about the Republican slate at large. Oh, okay, because this one's early voting ends tomorrow. Get out and vote for Marsha Blackburn and our conservative values. But then in their little picture, it's got like uh, Timmy Burchett and some other people who are also running for Republican seats. And so, because she's she's a team player, that's important. Yeah. I like that. I she, like that she's a team player. She's not divisive. I like she could probably cook a good casserole. Actually, I don't, I don't know if she's ever taken the rhino line, so I'll, I'll give her a little credit for that. <laughs> I would <laughs> – yeah. Um, how many people are that she is supporting right now would she call a rhino if it, if if push came to shove? All of them. Very possible. They're, nobody's rhino enough. <sighs> I, I mean, I, I would love to see her lose. Whether it's Gloria or somebody else, I would love to see her lose. But it is her. I think it's like the Child Protection Act or something that she co-sponsored with, like, so like Richard Blumenthal, maybe. Yeah, we've talked. Uh, we talked about a little that's, bit. That's the know. one that I, I mentioned last week or week before. Yeah, that there was one piece of legislation that I actually give her some respect for. I don't know if I do or not. I have a hard time with that. I don't. Dis- it's not about what the premise is, but I'm. I've. I think I've gone full jaded. If any politician ever says something about protecting c- children, I've called bullshit. It's going to be something else. That's just their. That's their lever. It's not their goal. I don't. I don't buy it. I, I, I'd have to look at the legislation to be fair right. on this particular one. But I'm so burnt out on this. So we got to do this to protect the kids because, especially on the right, we got to burn all these books to protect the kids. We got to get this stuff out of schools to protect the kids. And it has nothing to do with it. They're not trying to protect kids. There's no protection in play. This is all. I think this is like online. Right, I, I agree with that. I mean, I'm saying this particular one that we're talking okay. about, Marsha. But I'm just saying from the from the right in Tennessee, if the right in Tennessee says we're doing this to protect children, I, my my immediate gut reaction is no, you're not. This isn't about kids. You're just using kids as the as the uh, the wedge to force whatever it actually is you're trying to do through. Because <clears throat> that's what I mean. I, I don't know. If, I won't even. It's not even fair to say that's what they do. I'd say we're, Democrats do it too when they want to. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just like to at least start in the conversation of trying to look at this kind of in the, in the same kind of mindset of like AI. It's like we need to start thinking about the you know possibilities of technology that we're using and the capabilities of it. And yeah. if we don't get a handle on it, how it can quickly spiral. Yeah, it could. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I, I agree with that in premise. I just don't see any practical. Maybe I, maybe this one is the one that I haven't seen because it's her and I don't want to look at it because it's her name on it. Um. But I don't know. I don't think, you know, this uh, this uh, Congress is so ineffectual at large. I can't imagine that anything of any value is ever going to come through anyway. It's very possible. Especially at this date and time. <laughs> Do what? I said especially at this date and time. Yeah. I mean, Do it's... I think Biden passed something yesterday, day before? Woohoo, what is it? I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't recall. Um I'm assuming it was something that had already kind of been in the works, and it was him just kind of, you know, signing it in. I don't, I don't think it, it wasn't like an executive order. Or gotcha, gotcha. Like that. Uh, so here's a fun one, uh, but come bring it back local in the uh, earnings report, for lack of a better word, for all the campaigns in this cycle. It's almost a dead heat between Democrats and Republicans. The only reason the Republicans are ahead is because as as re- reported campaign financing or whatever. Yeah, the only reason. Uh, the, the uh, as far as the the, the the that would be the starting January one, it's almost dead even. It's like within a couple thousand dollars. Right. Um, but thanks to Garrett Holt and his preparatory, uh, um, him starting his campaign way earlier than everybody else. Yeah, like I think they both they both raised about two hundred thousand dollars each. Not they, the uh, the parties and or the members of the parties collectively. So, like, all the Republicans and the Republican Party have raised about $200,000 this year. All the Democrats and the Democratic Party have raised collectively about $200,000 this year. Garrett Holt had about $50,000 that he raised last year for this campaign cycle. Yeah. And so the Republicans are up by fifty grand only because Garrett started early. <laughs> so I was watching. But my mailbox, man, I like, I keep making the joke about this, but I get a District 4 race flyer. Every day, whether it's from one or the other or both, every day. I've gotten a, a Massey flyer every third day for weeks now. 
you get any at the shops? Do they send them to business addresses? I wonder. No, because yeah. you get to pick when you do that. I've done I've done those every day, every door direct mail things through, right. and you could pick. Well, there's two ways to do it. There's, there's a couple ways you can actually send them addresses. You could say I need a thousand of these sent out, and you can actually send them like an Excel file with addresses in it, and they'll just you know. Or you can even print them with your printer with the addresses already on them. Yeah. Or some of the campaigns will do it where they get you know label makers and like the label paper that you run through the printer yeah, yeah. and they'll print their addresses off themselves. And these are the addresses they get from the election commission and stuff like that when they buy the data, but they're all there. I mean, they're addressed to me right. or my household or whatever. I just didn't know if any candidates ever just kind of like, Hey, I've got some extra money. Let's, you know, let's blanket send out some, some businesses as well. Cause yeah, no, cause I mean, I, I maybe there's 20 people in that office that might see yeah. this. But what I'm interested in is like what I haven't seen a lot of is, I haven't seen a lot of pack mailers this year. I've seen a ton of pack ads, these pro voucher ads or these anti candidates who are anti voucher ads. I've seen a ton of ads. Apparently, one of the pro choice or school choice packs, uh, freedom choice, freedom, student freedom TN or something like that pack, uh, has spent a million dollars in the state of Tennessee this year already on campaign ads. Wow. On anti campaign ads. All of them is. Not that guy, not that guy, not that guy. Right. And it's all, well, what's interesting about it is it's, none of them are about that. Like, it's all, like, nicely is nice to criminals. Nicely pardons criminals for this. Nicely lets, uh, let, let's sexually, like, you know, like, but it's always, it's all, the, uh, nicely is one of the ads. It, it's all, Frank nicely voted for this thing that allowed illegal immigrants to get in-state tuition. Nicely voted for this thing, or didn't vote for this thing that would have stopped this bad thing that you hate from happening. This ad paid for by the School Freedom Choice Fund pack. And so every single one of the attack ads are on items that are not related to school choice. They're just candidates that were against school choice. And this is their way to try to get them out because they are primary and against somebody who is pro-choice. Yeah. Pro-school choice, sorry. Can't say pro-choice like that. <laughs> Mubby. Pro-choice of schools. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and then what? Governor Lee at the Republican convention. That's it's the right, civil. Right. It's the civil rights out. It's the civil rights battle of our era. Oh, God, I forgot he said that. I got into. I, I was talking to my sister a little bit about. I kind of want to go back and see what the hell Polk Hogan talked about. Well, he ripped his shirt off. That was cool. <laughs> I didn't see any or hear anything specific. About <laughs> I just saw a clip of him doing it. And I'm like, oh, that's right. He was there. I'm like, what? What did he even talk about? Kid Rock was there. Sang a song. That everybody was there was funny clips of like you know these old white yeah. people like rocking out to it was, kid rock. That was uh, even even for me that was cringe. Um, I don't. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. I got it. I was talking to my sister. My sister's a teacher in Colorado. Um, uh, about stuff, and it's like and it go like I I, I kind of went on to my my rant about it's like I get so confused. When I, you know, it's like, I know it's different for you. Colorado's a little bit more, I think Colorado's more of a blue state now. It used to be a red state. I think it's like a lot of states where it, it pretty much like the cities have the pockets, but it's still a very rural state. Right. right. But, but Colorado has, their rural is super rural. They're 10,000 acre, million acre ranches and stuff like that that have three people on them. Right. And then you have like the, what, 2 million people that live in the Denver metro area. Right. And the t- state's population is 3.5 million. <clears throat> and so, like all of pe- all all of the people that live in Colorado live in the more metropolitan areas, except for like a hundred who live in the rest of the state. Um, any, but anyway, the uh, you know, and so it's like I'm not, I don't know, like I still don't know where I am on school choice. Like I, I know that this format makes no sense, like it just functionally and financially makes no sense. But I like I don't believe that I don't believe that the that the Tennessee legislature is going to give money in a format that's going to that I don't believe that they're going to have the ability to legally put this together and restrict it to private schools that fit their formula that fit their model, which is basically Christian private schools, which is what they want to fund. That's it. You don't see how they're going to restrict it to them. Right. They're going to, they're they're, I don't see how you could legally do that per the U S and Tennessee constitutions where you could legally say, we're going to put a private school fund where you can choose to take this private school fund to pay for your private school tuition, but only if the school is X and that X is a religious doctrine. 
I don't think you could do that. And so they're going to have to open it up to all religious type schools, all private type schools. And I don't see how they wouldn't long term start putting restrictions in place on how to fund and what they have to teach and how they have to teach it kind of stuff, which defeats the whole purpose of anybody wanting to send their kids to private school. Because I want to send my private kids to private school or homeschool them or do whatever it is. People that do that either think that the quality of education is better and or they don't want the state mandated formula of how to teach kids. They think the state mandated. I, I think one of the things that people like about private schools is they think the state mandated way to do it is wrong. I don't think that's the reason that people send their kids to private schools. Why do you think? Do they think the education is better? They, they think it's a better outcome. Okay. Well, if it's a better outcome, that's because they're teaching differently than the way the public schools teach. That the, the formula of public schooling is wrong. I think we're saying the same thing here. Maybe I said it in a weird way. That's my bad. I think, they're be- I think they think that private schools have better outcomes. Because the way they teach in those private schools is different than public schools. No, not the way they teach. What they teach? No, How they teach? I, I think it's more you have a, a higher student to teacher ratio. Okay. Or, that, that's sorry, part of the reverse. A higher a lower teacher teacher to student ratio. Yeah. Huh. Right. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But still that's, that's part of that that's that's then the way the state teaches kids in public schools isn't as adequate to what they want. I mean, yeah, I think we said the same thing. I said it in a weird way. I'm sorry. You, you lean more in the doctrination. I do. I, there is part of that for me for sure. hundred percent. Okay. I thought, I thought that's what you're leaning Because why into. wouldn't there be like, why wouldn't you, if you're the state of Tennessee, that's what schools are. Indoctrinate that's what we, how that's what we built public schools for. Indoctrinate how I, patriotism is first and foremost. I think that's what, that's one of the, 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 the simple ones. To an extent, yeah. I mean, you, would you argue that we teach American history accurately? Or do we teach a more... A little skewed. Uh, uh, and how's it skewed? Uh, maybe in, in our favor or against us? In our favor. Okay. Like, you know, so we say the pledge every day and we teach you the history of the United States and leave out the bad parts or skim over the bad parts and tell you all the cool, awesome things we've done. Like we saved Europe in World War II and, and World War One, for that matter. And, you know, we weren't as bad to the Indians as everybody says we were. Uh, we what gave else blankets. We got? Yeah. What else we got here? You know, We pointed them in the direction they could go where we you wouldn't know, like, bother them for at least 10 or 15 like years. Vietnam was about the free, like, try to protect the freedoms of the southern Vietnamese people. And Korea was about, you know, democrat d- democracy or whatever the fuck it was that our excuse to go in. And North, uh, the, the Korean War was about, you know. And so that's how we teach it because we want, you know, we want to... Uh, Good red blooded Americans. Yeah, that would be private schools are they don't do that. I'm not they, sure. they teach history differently. I don't know if they do or not. I don't know. I haven't seen a private school's curriculum. Okay, but that is one of the, that that would be my argument for one of the indoctrination things that the state does. And I think more importantly for the topic here, it's like if the school is a product of the state, that the state controls how the schools work, what they do, how much money they get, blah 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 blah. Then obviously the curriculum is going to be decided upon by the elected body of the state. And if you agree with that format, then it's cool. But if you disagree with that format, then you're stuck with an education system that's educating your kids, avoiding certain topics that the state doesn't want to be talked about, homosexuality, whatever it is like we do here in the state of Tennessee, and insisting on topics that are important to the state legislature for whatever reason, because somebody wants to get elected, they're going to make this a topic for schools so that they don't have to worry about, so that they impress parents with, so they can get their jobs, so they can teach the kids how they want to teach the kids at school. That was a really weird sentence. I'm sorry. Yeah, you lost me. On that. <laughs> I don't have any idea what you're saying right now. I don't know if you saw my eyes, just kind of glass over there for a second. I mean, again, so again, from my sister's point of view, I can see how it's different because Colorado's a different state. They're, they're different. They're different. Um, uh, it, it politically make it different than we are. But in Tennessee, it's uh, it, it's weird to me that the Republicans are the ones pushing for private schools when the Republicans are the ones that own public schools. They own them. They can control them how pretty much however they want with, with some limitations by the state constitution. Like they cannot teach religion in schools because that's a constitutional state constitution and federal constitutional issue that they can't cross. They can try. Other states are trying to do it too. Uh, but I would say like, yeah, 10 commandments instead of lunch or whatever that whole thing was in Alabama. Um, but it's like, you know, but outside of that, the majority of the, the, the nuts and bolts of school that the, the Republicans run it. So why would you, 
want to dismantle that. Because they think the Democrats are running the schools. Because they're dumb. Like, again, that, that is a they dumb... They think the Democratic teachers are the issues. That, that's a dumb thing to say. And uh, they, that's just dumb. That's a dumb thing to say. You I run know, the schools. The, Re- the Republican you know, school board are the ones that are deciding curriculum. Cur- curriculum. Well, right. They're, they're the, uh, appointed by the Republican state legislature school board or state school executive committee or whatever their title is. Right, is the ones who are deciding curriculum. So everybody that's there is appointed by the governor and the state legislature. So they're gonna va- they're gonna value lean towards I don't know what do you think Republicans, conservatism, GOP, whatever you want to call it. That's how that that's how that body leans. There's no way it does it because Governor Lee could kick anybody out anytime he wants. So if he's got some crazy lefty on his state school board, he could kick him out anytime he wants, and he has zero repercussions for doing so. It's not like the state legislature should be like, you can't kick them out. We put them in there. He's like, yeah, I don't want him there. You guys don't want him there either. Get him gone. Like, it just said, like, the logic of it is what confuses me. Like, if we were in a Colorado where it was a little bit more even bodied politically, or I don't know, any other state that's a little more even bodied, Kentucky right now with a Democrat uh, governor and a Republican majority in the House and Senate of that state, you know, I could see how you could make the argument for, hey, let's do a school choice thing. So that people have a choice to get out of this system because some people don't like it. But you're basically saying, get out of the system that we built. That's what Tennessee's doing right now. It doesn't make any sense to me. I thought you guys were the ones that said, we're, you, you're, you're control the schools. Good thing, control the schools, man. Do your thing. Yeah, it does defy a little bit of logic. Right. And then the inverse, but again, in the inverse of that, and this is how stupid politics is, the inverse is that all the lefties that I know that a lot of them are teachers and stuff like that like our full throated hate on school choice because it's going to defund their system and blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's going to defund the system that's run by the people you hate. Now I understand it's your job and stuff like that, which makes it a little bit more wonky, but even like the non-school people, people that aren't employed by the schools who hate school choice, hate Republicans, hate the way the state of the legislature works, hate all those things. And it's like, well, these, these two things are incongruent. You have the opportunity to take money from the state and get your kids out of the school system that these Republicans run and put your kids somewhere else out of the Republican stronghold, and you're fighting that. Like, it, it both ways works right now that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I would think the left would be like, yes, let me get my kids out of these schools. Give me the money. I'll get my kids out of these schools. We'll do a co-op or something, and we'll grow, you know, Chia seeds and do whatever we got to do. And I don't think the money's there to do that. Yeah, but if you're if you're on the left, who gives a shit? Why, why the money doesn't have to be there? You just well, you just you're you're just getting what? your you're getting you're getting your kids out of the system that is run by these Republican crazies. But you still got to worry about giving your kids education. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe I would rather if I was that adamant about the control of the crazies over the most important things to my kids, I would figure a way if, if there's an option for me to do another way, I'd figure that way out. I don't know. Uh, the only, the I, only I, thing from the left perspective, I don't, think those, I don't think most of those involved in the public school system want to take their kids out of it. I they know it's not perfect, but they know it's. But it's everything. But 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 everything that they hate about it is the stuff that the Republicans are doing to it, and the Republicans are going to continue doing it to it because the Republicans have the control and the right to do so. Yeah, they, this new book law. They, yeah, they don't like the legislature's coming in telling what they can or can't have in their their classroom. But the legislature always could do that. They're just starting to actually flex that right instead of just kind of leaving it be like they used to. And so if, if I think they see them f- flexing it in, in a way that they don't like, <laughs> yes, not, not necessarily in a way they don't like that. I, I mean, this is the new book overs- band thing is a perfect example. There's books know. that have been in the libraries for 20 and 30 years that they're trying to get thrown I, out of the library. I don't think also. it's just like the book band. I think it's, it's, it's kind of like the, the questioning and but, well, I guess not so much like the book band, but like a lot of it, you know, is that kind of like questioning of, you know, what are, what are the teachers teaching in the schools? You know, there's some on the right that think that all teachers are just groomers. 
So I think, you know, a lot of teachers, you know, they they consider themselves as kind of a collective, you know, as kind of a collective community, we, we as teachers. So they kind of take it as an attack on all of them. Sure. And, they, they, you know, they think we're all just, you know, teaching kids to hate America. You know, we were talking about, you know, are we teaching the correct history? You know, there's so much pushback on that of, of trying to teach any kind of accurate history. Right. Because it's viewed as, you know, you're teaching our kids to hate but America. I mean, it, but, but again, uh, from a state perspective, if you were the state of Tennessee and or the state of America, the United States as a global yeah. state, yeah, there's a little bit of a conflict of interest in that. You know, like you don't want you 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 do, you certainly don't want to teach an entire generation to hate to to the the truth about it because the truth about it's pretty shitty and you might get some hate for it. It depends on how you teach it. You know, and I, I, especially like there's, there's absolutely a way to teach it in the guise of these are the mistakes we've made and this is how we've learned to get that's around. A fair point. It. That's a fair point. I don't know. I don't. Because I think a lot of the mistakes, you know, are mistakes of our past. They're things that we have learned from. I don't. I don't know that we've there's learned from a lot of them. That's not a lot of them, problem. but we've learned from some of them. Like we're still in Middle East doing stupid shit all the time. All we're doing. I don't learn that. <laughs> That's that's been a thing going on for centuries. I know, and we and and we we at large as the humanity have not learned that lesson. Maybe is a better point, whether we know the history or not. It doesn't seem no, to matter if you know the history or not. It's a continued issue, right? Sure, so we have different parties that are involved, in different degrees of interest in said yeah. issue. Interest is a very very key term. Because interest means a lot of things, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and depending on what you're interested in, um, yeah, exactly. really changes how you view a situation. That's why apathy is the best policy. I'm not interested in any of it. I don't care about any of it. Kill each other. Leave me alone. Johnny, I thought I saw something else crazy recently. Did have an interesting thought. Uh, of a kind of a bonus of you know, possible single payer healthcare system that it would then lower car insurance rates. I think it would work because I, I think you know one reason the car insurance rates are so high are right. You got to cover the medical for the injured parties, right? Yeah, maybe. You know how much that would offset you know a rise in taxes or whatever to for yeah. that if that would actually save. I don't. Yeah, that's one the of those Joe. That is a that is that is a solutionless. I, got, I haven't had an accident in years, and my my car insurance ain't cheap. Yeah, I know. I haven't. We haven't. Uh, I've had. I haven't had a net fault since I was like seventeen. Oh, damn. I've had some others. I've been hit by people. All right. Um. Or I've had one of. I I have not even personally not being a party, but you know the whole family insurance is together, or whatever. <clears throat> We got hit in another state, which got real awkward and fun and weird. And, um, you know, and, and what's actually on that particular one was quite upsetting. And it's like, well, it still kind of strikes against you, right? It's a, it strikes against you, but B, we were not. It was not a, at fault. We were not. It was a, it was a merge thing. That I've seen all the pictures and looked at all the, like watched it all and, and talked to all the whatever and stuff like that. Um, and. It seems pretty clear to me that we got hit, but Maryland, not no, not different than Tennessee, cops not coming out unless somebody's hurt. All right. So, how do I prove that I wasn't at fault? Because the only difference really, there's like a five hundred dollar difference to me. If I can prove that I wasn't at fault, then the other person's insurance have to pay my deductible. All right. You know, it's still five hundred bucks. It's worth the effort a little bit, but mm-hmm. like, you know, but again, it counts. It, it's a strike against me on my rates, no matter how you slice it. One, but two, cop doesn't come out and put a net fault on the on the on the situation, and I'm like, wait a minute, that guy hit me. Why am I have to? Pay? I don't have to pay a deductible. Why am I have to pay a deductible? I'm not at fault. Well, we don't have any documentation that says you're not at fault. Uh, I've wondered about that as of late. Now, insurance companies, like my insurance company, put some effort. No, they didn't. Why would they? They might have. They said they were. They said they would look into it and see what they could figure out. And if they deem it to be at fault, 
then they will bill the other guy's insurance for my deductible and they'll send me a check back. Yeah. But what incentive do they have to try very hard on that? They get their 500 bucks either way, whether it's from me or the other insurance company, they're good. Possibly not very much. So I don't know. Nowadays, I'm assuming you just got to take with, it's been that kind of rise and people having dash cams. I thought about getting one just for, you know, people doing crazy shit to where you kind of have this situation of like, how do you prove that you weren't at fault? Sure. I mean, you know, I thought we paid taxes for cops to come out and make that determination because they're professionals. But I don't know. I'm not a Maryland citizen, so maybe I, we do it here too. I know we don't. Cops don't come out unless somebody's injured. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, though. It's like, you know, that, that is a weird that, that is a weird system we've rolled into on that. And, and it's like, I don't know. You know, like, I don't know what the, I don't, I don't know what the right answer to that is, but it seems kind of, kind of wonky that I can't get a quote, independent third party municipal police department to come out and assess the situation to pass that along to the insurance company so that the right people pay the right parts. Yeah. So, but again, the insurance company has no real incentive to do it because they're getting theirs either way. All right, let's get weird, buddy. It's going to take a sec. What? What? Ha. Uh, what? I think I did see something about boneless wings. Or cheaper? Chicken wings advertised as boneless, quote unquote, can have bones. Ohio Supreme Court decides. Okay. Why? I'm assuming that's kind of the same thing with like the USDA and stuff that it's has to be 0.01% or whatever. Let's see here. Let's see your Ohio State. Supreme Court rejecting claims by a restaurant patron who suffered serious medical complications from getting a bone stuck in his throat. Standing with his wife at a wing joint, nor the usual boneless wings with Parmesan garlic sauce. When he felt a bite-sized piece of bone go down the wrong way. Three days later, feverish and unable to get food down. What a fun detail. They went ahead and threw in the the sauce selection. I love it. (laughs) See here. Thin bone had torn his esophagus and caused an infection. I mean, that sucks. Saying the restaurant failed to warn him that the so-called boneless wings, which are, of course, nuggets of boneless, skinless breast meat, contain bones. Could contain bones. 4-3 ruling. Supreme Court said that, quote-unquote, boneless wings. Chew your wings. food, bro. I think that's the, that's what the ruling was, right? 4-3 ruling. Chew your food. Refers to a cooking style and that... Should have been on guard against bones. Yep. Like you kind of like said, since it's common knowledge that chickens have bones. <laughs> High court side with lower courts that had dismissed. I don't know why that's so funny. That's Chickens do have bones. Yes. Yes, they do. So, uh, yeah, a diner reading bone, quote unquote, boneless wings on a menu would have, would no more believe that the restaurant was warranting, I was warranting the absence of bones and the, Items than believe the items that were made from chicken wings, just as a person eating chicken fingers would know that he had not been served fingers. That's a valid point. I mean, I, I justice wrote for the majority. I can get the premise that you say it's boneless, that there shouldn't be bones in it. And I can get the argument there, but at the same time, how uh, chew your food? Like, I mean, this is so, so this is a two parter. Not only did this guy not really chew his food, but he didn't swallow this piece of chicken with a bone in it. He inhaled it, and it got stuck in his windpipe. It got stuck in his esophagus, which is the wind side, right? Or is that the, the or is that the shared part of the tube? I get confused on my anatomy on that part. Your esophagus, either way, your esophagus goes down to your uh... no esophagus. Huh? Yeah, esophagus goes down to your stomach. Your stomach, okay. Yeah, trachea goes yeah. to your lungs. All right, whatever. Chew your food, bro. I mean, like, you're not exempt from dealing with the effects of swallowing things whole. I mean, it's it's, it's the justices were still kind of torn on it. It was four three. I mean, I get it. I like, I get it because I get the argument. You say it's boneless, and there's a bone in it. That's pretty antithetical in language, right? 
But, I mean, even if you chewed it up well enough, I mean, you can kind of chew around a small enough bone. It sounds like a small bone, you know, just kind of cut his throat. The three-day thing is kind of weird. Like right. It was three stuck days in there for three days. What's an esophagus? Like probably an inch, inch and a half diameter? Average yeah, esophagus? Probably. So that means there was an inch and a half long bone? Long enough to get stuck? Or are we thinking this thing like skewered, like stabbed him in the esophagus? It was only like a millimeter long, but somehow got stuck. Like a stuck to me implies that like... I think it said it cut his esophagus because it said... I guess what happened to him was he ended up getting like an infection. I don't know. I've eaten a lot of stuff and I've been not very smart about the way I've eaten a lot of stuff and I've hurt myself eating things before, but I've, I've never scratched my esophagus to the point of infection. Yeah. It sounds like he probably had more than one boneless wing in his mouth. Was just like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm saying like, I'm trying to do the, like I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how, I mean, cause I mean this, I mean, this you system breading that's probably fucked up my throat more than right. like, I'm saying, like there's, there's like, I mean, this is like, there's an evolutionary part of this, you know, like we've, we've been swallowing bones as a species for millennia, not whole giant bones, but we've been swallowing small bones all the time. We do it all the time. Yeah. Fish, especially like, like the number one protein for humans for a long period of time was fish. And I everybody gets a bone or two. You get a nice fillet, salmon fillet, a good quality salmon fillet. So they, have you ever watched them pick bones in salmon fillets? Yeah. Super tiny, super thin. Yeah. Little like, like tiny needle looking things. Yeah. These like, you know, like, especially like sushi guys that are pros at it. They're like with uh, tweezers, like put the, put the, put the, popping them out. Yeah. And it's like, how did you even see that, bro? It's like you just know where it's at. Well, they feel it too. They rub their hand across it and feel yeah. it. But anyway, you know, it's like we've been swallowing those for millennia. And not getting scratches on our esophagus and infections from them. What's wrong with this guy? There's something wrong with this guy. Super chickens, man. Yeah, maybe. It's all the antibiotics. It's all the, yeah, it's all the growth <laughs> hormones in there. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Their shoulder blades are very much like blades. Oh, All right, one more. Let's get it done. That was a good one, though. I enjoyed that one very much. Thank you for bringing that one to us. Uh, da, da, ba, da. There's a good one. Oh, yeah, the Wienermobile flipped over in uh, suburban Chicago. Yes. Oh, that's not cool. I'll take that back. I rescind my yes. That sucks. I'm sorry, Wienermobile and the fans of it. I'm not going to lie. I got supremely excited a couple of years ago when the Wienermobile was down in Maryville when I was working at a Kroger down there. I won't say highlight of my life. But it was pretty exciting. I was excited to see it. A spicy dispute over the origins of Flaming Hot Cheetos winds up in court. Uh, there was a documentary about that. That's what I was just thinking. It's a Netflix thing. I thought they already found the guy that supposedly came up with it. What a weird thing to get up in on a ship. Mexico. There's no comment on the lawsuit, which was filed July 18th in California Superior Court. Began working for PepsiCo's janitor. Yes, the janitor guy that supposedly came up with it. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the documentary story, as I recall. Yeah. It's for a meeting. According to the lawsuit, turned on. They turned on this guy in 2021. Cooperating with a LA Times piece that claimed others in the company were already working on spicy snacks when the gentleman approached them. And that they, not, I don't know. I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce his last name. Came up with the name Flamin' Hot. So PepsiCo about face has hurt his speaking career and other potential opportunities, including a documentary about his life. Oh, so maybe the documentary got pulled out. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. I, that's, it's a bummer if you came up with it. I think I did see. You know, apparently, there's a slide in Detroit that people were getting fucked up on. Like sliding down, it's like a yeah, a, a, a humps, a whole bunch of humps, humps and humps and bumps. Yeah. It's like as people like we're going faster and faster. <laughs> so there will probably be fewer bruises this time. The giant slide is back. Yes. 
Get after it. All right, my friend. I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. I'm sure there is. There always do. Uh, election day is Thursday, everybody. Get out and vote. Uh, share your pictures of you and your I Voted sticker on the Almost in Agreement website or uh, Facebook page, rather. Tag me in your pictures. Um, I'll send you mine. Oh, and P.S., if you happen to run into me at the polling location, um, make sure you tell the election officials that I pull the Republican primary and that I am not a Republican. And let's see what happens. Um, Chris Davis, I'm sorry, buddy, if I cause you problems by getting a whole constitutional crisis at play because I'm misrepresenting myself in my primary ballot choice. But I'm in. I'm going to do it. So wish me luck. Uh, are you going to go vote on Thursday? Prove me wrong. No. <laughs> I love asking questions that I know the answer to. Cracks me up. Thanks uh, for asking. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, if you see me at the polling place, make sure you uh, wrap me out. Almost in agreement, boys and girls. We did a show. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, it was a fun one. Uh, jumped all over the map. Federal, local, state issues. Uh, I don't know. Um, if you're We're international, we did go international. You're right. We did some Olympics coverage. Uh, you know, so uh, basically what I'm learning is that if you're in a district that you've seen an attack ad on your people and you want school choice, then listen to the attack ad. If you don't like school choice, then disregard the attack ad. That's your primary person that's at least somewhat anti-school choice. Um, it's a mess. It's crazy. Um, good luck figuring it all out. If you're in Knox County proper and you have anybody, uh, you can check out uh, CompassKnox.com. They've got all their election coverage outside the paywall right now. Um, I'm looking forward to watching this city stuff get ramped up for our ballot items for those people who are city races. Even though I don't get to vote on them, I'm curious how it, it plays uh, because I like those kind of questions and the way they work. So, anyway, almost agreement, almost agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, almost agreement at gmail.com, podcast providers, all those cool things. Tell your friends about us, text it to people. Uh, stay tuned, we'll do an election recap uh, next week because we'll be right after the thing. So, uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you.